Today's invocation will be provided by the Venerable Tik Fat Lu of the Chiwa Z Lak Buddhist Temple. Council Member Esparza will tell us more. Thank you, Vice Mayor. I'd like to welcome the Venerable Tik Fat Lu, Abbot of the Chiwa Z Lak Buddhist Temple, for our invocation today. Venerable Thich Phat Lu came to the U.S. in 2001 and completed his master's degrees in religious studies and psychology at CSU Long Beach, as well as a master's in experimental psychology at San Jose State. He founded the Viet Tu Te Charity in 2006 and the Zilak Temple in 2007 and has taught Buddhism and Vietnamese language and culture for thousands of young Vietnamese in our community. The temple is now one of the largest Vietnamese Buddhist temples in the Bay Area and hosts Buddhist classes, chanting and rituals, funerals, weddings and meditation. Since 2016, the temple has served as a senior nutrition program site, serving thousands of meals each year to our seniors of all backgrounds. Expanding on this role during the pandemic, the temple has served as a critical, critical food distribution site for our community, serving over 51,000 meals since the pandemic and distributing 100,000 units of PPE, including masks, face shields, and hand sanitizer. And I'd like to thank the abbot for his tireless efforts to keep our vulnerable residents fed during these unprecedented challenging times. So thank you, Venerable Thich Phat Lu, and welcome. Namo tasa bhagavato erehan sama sambudasa. I pay homage to the Buddha, the Holy Ones, the Awakened Ones. The Heart Sutra. The Bodhisattva Avalokita, while moving in the deep course of perfect understanding, set the light on the five skandha and found them equally empty. After this penetration, he overcome all beings. Wang Listen to uh, the Ratana Sutra, that the Sutra talked by the Buddha during the pandemic in the Buddha time. Whether, whether beings that are as here assembled, whether terrestrial or celestial, may every being be happy and joyful, and also listen attentively to my words. Listen here, all beings. Shower your loving kindness to those humans who day and night bring offerings to you. Therefore, guard them diligently. Whatever treasures there may be, either here or in the world beyond, or whatever precious jewels there are in the heavens, yet none is comparable to the enlightened one. In the Buddha is this precious jewel found. On account of this truth, 
May there be well-being. The tranquil sage of the Sakyas realize cessation, freedom from passion, deathlessness, and excellence. There is nothing comparable to this Dhamma. In the Dhamma is this precious jewel found. On account of this truth, may there be well-being. Pu that pure concentration, the Supreme Buddha praised, is described as concentration without interruption. There is nothing like that concentration. In the Dhamma is this precious jewel found. On account of this truth, may there be well-being. Those eight individuals constituting four pairs, they are praised by those at peace. They worthy of offerings are the disciples of the enlightened one. Gifts given to them yield abundant fruit in the Sangha is this precious jewel found. On account of this truth, may there be well-being. With steadfast mind, applying themselves thoroughly in the dispensation of Gautama, free of passion, they have attained to, to which should be attained and plunging into deathlessness. They enjoyed the peace, nibbana, and absolute freedom. In the Sangha is this precious jewel found. On account of this truth, may there be well-being. Just as a firm post sunk into the earth cannot be shaken by the four winds. I say that a righteous person who thoroughly perceives the noble truth is similar to that in the Sangha is this precious jewel found. On account of this truth, may there be well-being. Those who clearly understand the noble truths, well taught by him who has profound wisdom, do not undergo an eighth birth, no matter how exceedingly heedless they may be. In the Sangha is this precious jewel found. On account of this truth, may there be well-being. Together with his attainment of insight, three qualities which have, have been abandoned by him, namely wrong belief in selfhood, doubt, and dependence on rites and ceremonies. He is absolutely freed from the four states of misery and is incapable of committing the six major wrongdoings. In the Sangha is this precious jewel found. On account of this truth, may there be well-being. He is incapable of hiding whatever evil he does whether by deed, word, or thought. For it is said that such an act is impossible for one who has seen the path. In the Sangha is this precious jewel found. On account of this truth, may there be well-being, just like a forest crowned in full blossom in the first month of the summer season. So it has the sublime doctrine that leads to Nibbana been taught for the highest good of beings. In the Buddha is this precious jewel found. On account of this truth, may there be well-being. The peerless, excellent one, the knower, the giver, the bringer of the excellent has expounded the sublime doctrine. In the Buddha, there is precious jewel found. On account of this truth, may there be well-being. Their past is extinct a new becoming there is not. Their minds are not attached to a future birth. Their desires do not grow. Those wise ones with their seeds of becoming destroyed go out even as this lamp does. In the Sangha there is this precious jewel found. On account of this truth, may there be well-being Sakas, exaltation. We beings that are here assembled, whether terrestrial or celestial, salute the accomplished Buddha, who is honored by gods and men. May there be well-being. We beings that are here assembled, whether terrestrial or celestial, salute the enlightened Dhamma, which is honored by gods and men. May there be well-being. <laughs> We beings that are here assembled, whether terrestrial or celestial, salute the noble Sangha who are honored by gods and men. May there be well-being.
quyền đêm không đứng này hướng về khắp tất cả để tư và chúng sanh đều trọn thành Phật đạo So it's our honor to be here. Thank you, uh, Council Member uh, Masa Espara, and um, we wish uh, everyone to be here. Good health and uh, good luck to your life. And uh, to overcome pandemic, especially uh, thanks to the vaccine, uh, we avoid going to hospital or going to, uh, to die. It's happened in Vietnam, our country. A lot of people know vaccine, they die a lot, uh, like the US before the vaccine you know, came out. So uh, I wish uh, the mayor and all the council members be strong enough to help our human being, especially in the Bay Area, in the San Jose city. And I have been working during the pandemic. I have been helping a lot of uh, senior, few thousand. So I learned a lesson, try to make a day meaningful and to live in the present moment. Thank you everyone being here and thank you uh, council member uh, Maya and thank you. Uh, this is not a time for public comment. The mayor, thank you everyone. Thank you, thank Abbott. You, Appreciate your wise words. Reverend, thank you so much for being here with us. Appreciate very much your words and this moment. All right, I understand that uh, masks are being made available to everyone uh, upon entry. We have a requirement that everyone who is here should be masked. So I wanna give everyone a chance to get their masks so they can put it on, and anyone who's not wearing a mask will be escorted out and asked to leave. We're not going to have any outbursts. Anyone who's speaking out of turn will also be asked to leave. We'll have an opportunity for public comment, extensive public on, comment on these items. This is not the time. Anyone who's engaged in any outburst of any kind, regardless of what is said, will be asked to leave and will be escorted out. Ma'am, if you could please put on your mask. Thank you. Everyone else who's standing in the back needs to be masked or needs to leave. We're not gonna proceed until everybody is masked. There are masks that are provided in the back, as I understand it. We're gonna, uh, we're gonna provide more masks right now. We're gonna give everybody a chance to uh, put their masks on and until then the meeting's adjourned. Thank you.
Hey, welcome back, everybody. As we were saying, um, we're going to proceed with the ceremonial items on today's calendar, and then we'll, uh, after we uh, conclude the ceremonial items, we'll uh, ask members, uh, other members of the public to come in as we take on some of the items on the agenda. And so I'm going to uh, ask for everybody's patience. I know there are many folks waiting in the adjoining waiting room, uh, many of whom will be coming in here as they want to speak, uh, and we'll certainly accommodate that. Uh, but we're going to have three ceremonials, uh, and then orders of the day, uh, and today's adjournment, and then we will uh, bring folks in for the remainder of the calendar, both the consent and the actual items to be voted on. So that's how we'll do it. Uh, thank you, everybody, for your patience. Uh, for those who are in the waiting room, who are waiting to come in, everyone will continue to have an opportunity to speak to the council. Uh, we are, of course, going to uh, implement the mask mandate that we've had here at City Hall for many months. So anyone who wants to come in to speak will be required to wear a mask, as everyone who is employed at City Hall is required. Uh, and uh, we, of course, will ensure that there are no disruptions, uh, because anyone who is disrupting the meeting obviously is preventing us from hearing other members of the public and each other. And so we want to ensure that everyone can be heard, and that's how we're going to proceed. All right. So it just so happens, standing behind me, are some champions. Yes. You are looking at the CCS Section 2 champions. These are the Lincoln Ladies Varsity Soccer Team. And to tell us more is Council Member Deb Davis. Good afternoon, everyone. I am happy to present a commendation to the Lincoln Ladies Varsity Soccer Team for winning the Central Coast Championship last spring. Yeah. Being championship winners is no small feat, especially in such a tough league. The pressure from the opposing teams would crumble most, yet these champions in front of us stood tall and victorious. This accomplishment did come with adversities, as any would, but the Lincoln Ladies Varsity Soccer Team pushed through them with an astounding show of skill, determination, and teamwork. With a strong, undefeated season, the Lincoln Ladies Varsity Soccer Team proved their dominance by finishing first in the Blossom Valley Athletic League. Bringing home a championship is one thing, but this one is particularly special. To be the first Central Coast section champions in any female sport throughout the 75-year history of Lincoln High School. Now that's something to truly celebrate. And now I will turn it over to one of the players, Chloe Ligsey. Hi, I'm Chloe Ligsey, the center mid for the team. We thank Council Member Davis, Mayor Licardo, and the City Council for this recognition. It is appropriate that we are here on the same day that you are recognizing Women's Equality Day. Women's sports need more recognition and support at all, and support at all levels. We are excited for the upcoming season to try and defend our championship. Your support helps us get motivated to win for our school and our city. Now our Captain Haley is going to recognize some members of the team. Ziana Brito, Juliana Camacho, Natalie De La Torre, Lyric Gomez Muniz, um, Alyssa Hernandez, Emma Hintz, Kylie Cowie, Chloe Ligze, Milan Mock, Scarlett Nishishura Santos, Annette Perez, Emma Perez, Kennedy Shaynauer, Landry Shaynauer, Taylor Solizano, Haley Stagey, Jenna Stenhouse, Madeline Van Beber, and Sydney Von Appen. I would like to say I would um, appreciate that everyone keeps getting vaccinated and stays safe. Thank you. All right. <laughs> now, if we can do two, two rows, could the um, teacher? Here we gotta get everybody in the photo. And who am I giving this to? Is there a coach, captain? What do you think? All right, come on. Oh, come on over. Okay. Oh, okay. Well, we'll he doesn't get it. So yeah, you don't get it. Yeah, coach. All right. Thanks, <laughs>
All right. Thank you, ladies. Okay, uh, Councilmember Foley, please come on down. All right. Well done, guys. All right, Councilmember Foley is here to recognize and proclaim August 28th and 29th as Silicon Valley Pride Weekend. We will be uh, loud and proud this weekend. Yes. Is that right? For the Pride Parade and many other festivities. <laughs> Councilmember Foley, please take it away. Thank you so much, Mayor. And I do intend to be loud and proud because that's exactly what we should be this weekend. And I'd like to call forward Nicole Altamirano. Altamirano, I knew I was going to do that. Sal, Saldi, Serban, and Brian Rodriguez to come forward celebrating Silicon Valley Pride. It's truly my pleasure to proclaim Silicon Valley Pride weekend at today's city council meeting. Let me start off by saying that Silicon Valley Pride is back this year, and it's going to be better than ever. They have a lot of good activities planned. This year's theme is standing for love and liberation. I'm gonna repeat that in this context today, standing for love and liberation. We celebrate Silicon Valley Pride because we want to honor and celebrate the rights that we all have to choose whom we love and with whom we choose to spend our lives. Love means love, right? We, we, love, we can love anyone we want to. What was then known as the gay rights movement and today better known as the LGBTQ plus movement has been built on the backs of people who have fought hard for equality and progress. The event this weekend at the Plaza de Cesar Chavez is a way in which we honor those individuals and those whom we've lost. And right now, this ceremonial honors Silicon Valley pride and the hard work and many hours this group, this small but mighty group, does, creates in volunteering to create a more inclusive and vibrant LGBTQ plus community here in San Jose. With that, I'd like to hand over the microphone to Councilman Dev Davis to say a few words and then to Nicole Altamirano, the president of Silicon Valley Pride. Thank you, Councilmember Foley. I am thrilled to be part of an event that celebrates and honors our LGBTQ plus community. Thank you to Nicole Altamirano, Robert Peabody, Saldi Saraben, Brian Rodriguez, Sarah Fernando, and Jeffrey Ridley from Silicon Valley Pride, and the countless volunteers who put these events together this week. Your work highlights San Jose as an open and accepting place to be who you want and to choose whom you love. To celebrate Silicon Valley Pride, Council Member Foley and I will light up the City Hall in red, orange, yellow, green, blue, and purple this week. And I hope you enjoy the celebrations this weekend. Nicole? Happy Pride, everyone. We are, <laughs> thank you. <laughs> we are so happy to be back and what a council meeting to attend. So <laughs> yay, hey, but at least they weren't yelling at us. So we're happy about that. That means we're coming a long way in society. <laughs> I want to thank, you know, Pam Foley, Dev Davis, Council, or Mayor Sam Licardo, and all of the city council members. Our city leadership has always shown great support to Silicon Valley Pride, and we are really grateful. It really shows the LGBTQ plus community that we have leaders that support us. And I think Dev and Pam, like, said my entire speech already, but as they stated, our our theme this year is love and liberation, standing for love and liberation. And yes, love is love, and we have the freedom to love who we choose. And liberation, we're going to continue to stand for liberation until that liberation reaches all minority groups and spans across all color lines. So that is what Silicon Valley Pride stands for. We have a week-long uh, events scheduled uh, on Friday. We have rented out Excite Ballpark for the San Jose Giants Stadium. We're going to be showing a movie. It's completely free. Please go to our website, svpride.com, to learn about all of our events. And of course, Silicon Valley Pride is August 28th and 29th. We're going to have our popular parade on August 29th. 
and we have a few great headliners for you to check out. So we welcome you, and again, happy Pride, everyone. All right, and finally, Council Member Arenas will be presenting our final ceremonial item, and I welcome anyone else who'd like to join us as we recognize and proclaim August 26th as National Women's Equality Day. So we're gonna stay on me message in honoring uh, gender. And uh, today I have uh, two lovely ladies with me who are going to celebrate um, and we're gonna honor them, but I ask all of my council colleagues and if they're in the back, if they could please join me here at, um, uh, I don't know, what would you call this area? In the well. In the well, yeah. all right. Well, now we're in the well. <laughs> so if you look behind me, these are the results of the suffrage movement. Uh, these are, these women represent the fruit that has been born from from all of that sacrifice. Uh, and let me just tell you a little bit about what Women's Equality Day is. And thank you, gentlemen, for joining us because um, we absolutely need you in this fight um, to, uh, to commit to equality. In 1971, Congress designated August 26 as Women's Equality Day. And it was to commemorate the 1920 certification of the 19th Amend Amendment granting women the right to vote. <laughs> However, we must also recognize that black, Latino, and uh, women of color did not get the right to vote until nearly 50 years later. But today, over 100 years later, not only do women have the right to vote, but more women, women serve in elected office, in Congress, and in local politics than in any time in history of our country. And we are also proudly making up half of the city council today. So yay for our city council women. Woohoo. Woo Woo oh, that was weak, ladies. <laughs> Woohoo! <laughs> All right, that's what we are. We roar. <laughs> Women's Equality Day really celebrates the achievement of women and reminds us of the struggles women still face today. We, we all understand that gender discrimination and inequality still exists in our society, in our workplaces, in our homes, and we wanna make sure that we have champions, just like the men who stand behind us, to stand right next to us and fight for that equality. And so as part of, of supporting women and families, I know our council has approved many family-friendly initiatives in the past, um, making, facilitating uh, activities for women and men who are parents and who participate in public um, festivals and libraries and many other th uh, places that they can find um, throughout our city. So I'm honored to serve with all of you. And um, as women in leadership, we know we, we're well aware of the sacrifices of women that came before us. And so we must continue to fight to honor their struggle and to celebrate today um, Gabriela Chavez Lopez and Diana Maroquin, if you can stand to the front, they're going, we're going to recognize them because they are both leaders from the Latina Coalition of Silicon Valley, and they're going to accept the proclamation on behalf of Women's Equality Day. So our mayor is going to provide you with that proclamation, and then you can um, say some words. Okay. Okay, okay great. So thank you so much to Council Member Arenas, um, Mayor Licardo, and the entire City Council for making this a priority and acknowledging Women's Equality Day. Um, as been mentioned, it's my honor and my privilege to be here. I am the, uh, Gabriela Chavez Lopez, and I'm the current president of the Latina Co uh, Coalition of Silicon Valley. I am joined by my incoming board president, Diana Zamora Maraquin, and also our advisory board member, Zulma Maciel. Yay! <laughs> 
So on behalf of our entire organization, our board, and all of the Latinas that we serve throughout Silicon Valley, I wanna thank you so much for involving us in this distinct and special proclamation. Unfortunately, we have not achieved the equality that we would desire for our Latina population or women throughout the world, but our organization exists to address the economic and political disparity experienced by Latinas here in Silicon Valley. We cannot empower and strengthen Latinas without addressing women's rights and structural barriers that keep women from achieving their truest potential. We as a society benefit when women are doing well in the workplace, in their home life, because that has a ripple effect on familia and communities and societies and as a whole. And today I stand here as a product of the Latina Leadership Pipeline that Latina Coalition set out to set up 22 years ago. And I stand on the shoulders of mujeres, activists, and so many leaders that have come before me to blaze trails so that I could go further and faster than women before me. And my goal in life is to instill and inspire that next generation of women to push it even further. Thank you so much for this opportunity and thank you to the mayor and the council and council member Arenas for this wonderful invitation and this very important day. Thank you. Latina Coalition, but she's also a long-term city employee here, so we celebrate the talents of the women within our organization as well. Thank you. So I just, again, want to uh, remind folks who may be waiting in the public, um, we're going to uh, have our orders of the day in the adjournment, and then after that, we'll, uh, we'll have folks come in and uh, move on with the agenda. So thank you, everyone, for your patience. Right, okay, uh, good point. I was just reminded that we will do the closed session report also previous to the time that we bring folks in. We'll bring folks in right immediately prior to the consent calendar. So um, first, let's go to orders of the day. Um, we have an item 3.4 that I know many folks would like to speak on. That's 3.4 is the vaccine mandate, uh, vaccine requirement. Um, I'd like to combine the consideration of that on orders of the day with the actual item when it comes up at 3.4. Confirm with our city attorney if that's appropriate, so that way we can take the... You can do orders of the day with us. Okay, great. Right, so we don't need a vote on that. Okay. You, you, well, you can, you can vote on it. Any speakers... Oh, I see. If they wanted to vote, I'm sorry. Yeah. Well, I'm just asking Nora Freeman, our city attorney, to clarify the sure. process. Uh, if the council is going to have a debate on the uh, putting item 3.4 on to the uh, agenda, then we need to open up the debate to the public also. But if it's just a vote and you need two thirds to put it on the agenda at 3.4 and you're gonna save the substantive debate until later, and then you can just take that vote. Then we'll now. hear from the public later. And, and we, the council later, And yes. the council at, so the, at the same time. Clarification, we can just vote on it now to add it to the agenda and then discuss it later. Yes, That's right. and you need two thirds okay. vote, Got it. yes. Okay, uh, but prior to the time that we take any vote, uh, very important adjournment. I'd like to adjourn today's meeting in the memory of Bishop Emeritus, Johnny Irwin. It's also uh, Johnny Irwin Sr. Uh, who is also known as John John. Uh, and he has many family loved ones here um, in the council chambers, and I appreciate their patience. Um, daughters Valerie Watson Smith and Darlena Mays, grandchildren uh, Kenetra Mays, Richard Tate, J. 
Janice Gunter and Rebecca Ken. And I believe we also have uh, other members of the community, including senior pastor Teresa Tate, the Kingdom Worship Center, as well as Walter Wilson uh, and family friends, Helen Liggins and Virginia Jones and many others who are watching on Zoom. And of course, the reason why we have many others is because Bishop Emeritus was uh, an incredible force in our community and uh, founder of a wonderful congregation uh, and also an incredible uh, community-minded business person as well. And so I just want to tell you briefly about him. He was born in Calhoun, Georgia on August 25th, 1936. Uh, the horrors of Jim Crow South uh, had his family relocating to Ohio, where he would spend his formative years. He eventually found his way to San Jose in the 1980s, and we're very fortunate that he did. In 1986, he founded the Bethesda Community Church here in San Jose and served as its senior pastor for 20 years. Bethesda has been a place of hope and healing for many across Santa Clara County. And his commitments were to provide hope to the hopeless and building strong families. In 2015, he was elevated to the office of Bishop Emeritus at the Pentecostal Assemblies of the World, a pinnacle for his years of service uh, to his local church and to the California District Council and the national offices. Alongside his ministerial accomplishments, uh, Bishop Irwin is also a man known for his entrepreneurial aspirations. Uh, for many years, he owned a thriving janitorial business with well over uh, 20 contracts in, in the county. And it was his passion, though, for Southern cuisine uh, that would leave an indelible mark on our city. Uh, he founded John John's Barbecue Restaurant in 1995. Uh, it's tucked away on Oakland Road in District 3. I know uh, Councilmember Corrales and I live just a few blocks away from that old site. That's, uh, it was featured in the San Jose Mercury News. Uh, and uh, and Bro Bible's 2014 online feature, Eight Ways to Tell if Your Favorite Barbecue Joint is Authentic. So it was authentic. Uh, John John's Barbecue went mobile. It became a food truck during the official 49er tailgate parties inside the Faithful Mile at Levi Stadium and served many, many meals to our unhoused neighbors. Uh, Bishop Irwin's service to the community did not stop at Southern Comfort Food and Spiritual Leadership. He founded the F.E. Kennan Sober Living Facility, affectionately known as The Ranch, in Chowchilla, which supported individuals who are committed to lifelong sobriety and were grateful for his passion in helping so many who are struggling with addiction. As a result of his over 40 years of community service, on June 2016, Bishop Irwin was inducted to the top dad of Silicon Valley Hall of Fame and was recognized by the late Honorable Judge Sharon Chapman at the Beating, Building Peaceful Families Awards luncheon. Uh, he uh, was called from labor to reward on Friday, May 28th. Uh, tomorrow would have been his 85th birthday, and he is survived by his wife of 66 years, Norma Irwin, uh, four daughters, three sons, 19 grandchildren, 20 great-grandchildren, and yes, one great-great-grandchild, uh, and many spiritual sons and daughters. And I know, Valerie, uh, we welcome you to speak, and I believe there was another family member who would like to join us. Welcome. Good to have you with us, and please let me know if I missed anyone in the family. Good afternoon, everyone. I am Senior Pastor Teresa Tate, and I am one of the daughters of the Honorable Bishop John E. Irwin Sr., also known as John, also known as John John. Today I stand here with a few of John John's family members, his daughters, grandson, granddaughters, and our mother John's sweetheart, and some other family members who are watching virtually. We first would like to personally thank the Honorable Mayor Sam Licardo and the City of San Jose and the Council Chamber members for honoring our father, the Bishop Johnny Irwin Sr., and for inviting us here to have a few moments to share 
about the legacy that John left. I once read that a personal mantra is a positive affirmation to motivate. It's a positive affirmation to inspire oneself to be the best version of oneself so that they can govern themselves accordingly. With that said, our father, grandfather, husband, mentor, coach, pastor, friend, passionate, caring community advocate, businessman, and public servant leader visualized, actualized, and modeled his personal mantra for his life on a daily basis. John was a man of service, a man of faith, a man of business, a man of family, and a man of community. And John loved and embraced each facet of himself. Why? Because his whole heart, goal, and aim and mission was to give back by serving his country as a proud American. It was to share the message of faith, hope, and love to all. And as a self-made businessman, he knew the importance of strong work ethic and creating opportunities and building a legacy for his family and for others. While uplifting his community and becoming a voice for those who felt like they had no voice while being a change agent for those in need of a chance and a change when it came to social justice issues. And wherever our dad would go and whomever he would meet, they could rest assured that they were gonna hear about at least one or all of his personal life mantra points that our dad and grandfather was so passionate about. John was a skilled mastermind and he knew how to turn any event into a business meeting. <laughs> In closing, <laughs> as mentioned, John was a man of service, a man of faith, a man of business, a man of family, a man of community. And as he lived out his daily life impacting and inspiring others, our trust and our goal and aim is to follow in his footsteps and to pick up the torch of his life and to continue making those new chants and new change moves that represents our father's life and legacy. Thank you again for this honor. God bless you all. God bless our nation. And may God bless our city of San Jose. Thank you, sir. Is there a motion on orders of the day? Uh, I'll move approval and to include item 3.4. Second. Okay. I understand we uh, do have one member of the council who cannot be present, so we will have to be doing this uh, verbally one by one. Is that right? Okay, Tony. Senator? Yes. Corrales? Yes. Cohen? Aye. Carrasco? Davis? Yes. Esparza? Yes. Arenas? Yes. Foley? Aye. Mahan? Aye. Jones? Aye. Licardo? Aye. All right, thank you, everyone. <clears throat> we are now on to the closed session report. First, Nora. Thank you, Mayor. I do not have anything to report out of closed session, but I think you do. I do, as a matter of fact. Uh, I'm tremendously pleased to announce that we have a new city manager. Uh, and she looks an awful lot like our interim city manager. And that is Jennifer McGuire. And uh, I am so honored to continue to serve with Jennifer. She's been a tremendous leader in this city now for 30 years. Uh, 
and in the toughest of times. I know running the budget office back in the Great Recession and obviously as deputy city manager and, and a whole host of other roles, uh, she has really demonstrated to everyone on this council and, and in our workforce uh, how committed she is to the city. And I know she's gonna do a tremendous job. So I wanted to invite my colleagues in providing a round of applause to our new city manager. And finally, I'll note the vote was unanimous. All right, now, <laughs> Jennifer. <laughs> yes, thank you very much. Um, I am really incredibly honored and humbled to receive your confidence in me to serve as your next city manager. I'm looking forward to supporting the mayor and city council, leading our talented workforce, and um, serving our amazing and diverse community. I'm extremely grateful for the, uh, to work for an organization and a city that I personally love. As you know, I'm assuming this role during an unprecedented time. We are both responding to and recovering from a once in a lifetime pandemic. I'm committed to ensuring our COVID-19 efforts enable us to come out stronger together and we will do so by paying particular attention to those who need our help the most. I can't do this job alone and I know I will have great help and support from the impressive employees we have throughout the city organization at all levels. Our employees will continue to do their best work as we work in close coordination with each other to drive and accomplish the city council's priorities while also performing our important day-to-day -day founda foundational work. Together, we will meet our city mission to provide quality public services, facilities, and opportunities that create, sustain, and enhance a safe, livable, and vibrant community for our diverse residents, businesses, and visitors. 2021 marks my 30th year as a City of San Jose employee, and I look forward to many more. I want to acknowledge and thank the mentors who have guided me during my career and have taught me so much. I will take their lessons and make them proud as I lead the nation's 10th largest city. First of all, I'd like to thank Larry Lisenby, our former budget director, who took a chance on me by hiring me in the city manager's budget office in 1991. I'd like to thank Daryl Dearborn, former city deputy, senior deputy city manager who pushed me to grow my analytical skills and to always ask questions. I'd also like to thank several former city managers who trusted me to take on increasingly responsible roles over my career. Those include Les White, Regina Williams, Del Borgsdorf, and Ed Chicada. A special thanks to Deborah Fagoni, Noberto Duenas, and Dave Sykes, who I worked with the closest and still encourage me to this day. I'm also forever grateful to my husband and three children who have put up with my long hours at work and lots of takeout food over the years. Their, their support of my public service is second to none. In addition to mentors and family members, I believe that our individual and collective successes are the result of many factors, including the coworkers and teams that work alongside you, the managers that encourage you to, and bring out your best, and our own hard work and commitment to make a difference in someone's life every day even if we don't hear from them. I wanna thank everyone who has helped me along the way. Thank you again for allowing me to serve as your next city manager. I'm thrilled beyond belief. All right, thank you and congratulations, Jennifer. We look forward to the, the months ahead. All right, um, we are going to now welcome uh, members of the public into the chambers um, and we will proceed with our business for today. And the first item will be item 3.1, a report of the city manager. Yes, I don't have any report today, thank you. Okay. Um, Item 3.3 is a recognition of Juneteenth as a city observed holiday effective June 19th, 2022. So I'll have some opening comments. Okay. Um, I'm, I'm very pleased to bring forward a recommendation to the city council to recognize Juneteenth as a city observed holiday effective June 19th, 2022. Juneteenth is the, one of the oldest known celebrations of the ending of slavery. In 1863, the colored troops of the Union Army led by Nathaniel P. Banks captured Brownsville, Texas, freeing African-Americans in Texas. 
Popular history, however, credits June 19, 1865, when General Gordon Granger delivered the message in Galveston, Texas, that enslaved people were free. It is important to recognize that the Emancipation Proclamation came more than two years earlier, on January 1, 1863, and that many states continued to allow black people to be enslaved after General Granger's message. Honoring Juneteenth provides an opportunity to commemorate emancipation, raise awareness about the country's complicated and tragic history of slavery, and how it continues to affect the lives of all people. This isn't just for the African American community, it's something for everyone of every race to engage in, to commit to learning a widely unknown history. It's also important to honor and celebrate black lives and black futures. This is an initial but significant step towards the city's commitment to reckon with our own understanding and role in maintaining racial inequalities and our understanding of the magnitude of work that lies ahead to improve conditions for our African American community. With that, staff is available for questions. Thank you, Jennifer. Um, as folks are coming into the uh, chambers, I want to remind everyone there's a requirement for all city staff, all uh, visitors, to be wearing masks at all times inside City Hall. So I ask you to put on the mask that was provided to you in the back. If you're not wearing a mask, um, you'll be provided one. And if you're not willing to wear it, you'll be escorted out. Uh, we also will not allow any disruptions because disruptions prevent us from hearing from the public and from hearing from one another. So if anyone is disruptive uh, during the meeting in such a way as to prevent others from hearing what's happening, you'll be escorted out. Uh, thank you very much, Jennifer, and wholeheartedly appreciate the comments. Uh, the uh, public comment will be limited going forward to one minute because of the many hundreds of folks I think we have on Zoom, we're, we're gonna try to do everything we can to ensure we hear from everybody before our midnight uh, time for curfew. So uh, appreciate everyone's patience as we try to accommodate all the many members of the public who'd like to speak. Um, do we have uh, members of the community who'd like to speak on this item, Tony? I don't, I don't have in-person cards. I do have a lot of hands on the participants who I suspect want to speak on 3.4. Okay. I'm going to lower all so, of their hands. Okay, so, so let me make an want, announcement then. Yes. Uh, if you want to speak on the vaccine requirement, that's item 3.4, that's not this item. So if you want to raise your hand to speak now, that is only to speak on the recognition of Juneteenth as a city observed holiday. That is the item on which we are hearing public testimony now. Anyone who speaks on a different item we're basically gonna cut you off because we gotta hear from members of the public who wanna speak on this item. Okay, Tony. Kim Jackson. Hello, can you hear me okay? Yes, we can. Perfect, hello and thank you for allowing me to speak on this topic. My name is Kim Jackson and I've been with the city of San Jose for a little over three years in the fabulous city attorney's office. And I didn't want to pass up the opportunity to lavish praise on this organization for finally recognizing Juneteenth as a paid holiday. As you know, Juneteenth is the oldest nationally celebrated commemoration of the ending of slavery in the United States. And many in the African American community celebrate this as our true Independence Day. So again, thank you for recognizing it as a holiday and especially thank you for not taking away another holiday to do so. It was a long time coming but it's so appreciated and makes me super proud to work for the city of San Jose. Thank you. Paul Soto. Uh, yes, Paul Soto from the Horseshoe. Um, it's long overdue. I'm glad that the city uh, came around to it, but I'm quoting from uh, Frederick Douglass's uh, 4th of July speech. What to the American, what to the American slave is your 4th of July? I answer, a day that reveals to him more than all other days in the year, the gross injustice and cruelty to which he is a constant victim. To him, your celebration is a sham, your boasted liberty, an unholy license, your national greatness, swelling vanity, your sounds of rejoicing are empty and heartless, your denunciations of tyrants, brass, fronted impudence, your shouts of liberty and equality, hollow mockery, your prayers and hymns, your sermons, your thanksgivings, with all of your religious parade, 
is nothing but hypocrisy, a thin veil to cover up crimes which would disgrace a nation of savages. There is no nation on the. Tessa, Tessa Wood, Wood Mancy. Mancy. Thank you. Uh, thank you. Thank you, Paul. Um, yes, thank you, Paul, for about hypocrisy. And what I was going to comment on with this Juneteenth as a celebration of our um, freedom from slavery, saying that we truly aren't free from slavery, because what has replaced the black slaves or the African American slaves is the is the fossil fuel slave. That we are all fossil fuel slaves, and we are slaves to it, and we keep using it. And it to Tessa, our Tessa, I'm sorry, sorry. sorry. We're, we're talking about Juneteenth. Yes, and I'm making the connection to Juneteenth as. Joy. Joy. Maria. Maria, Maria Saldana. Yes. Uh, this I. I don't want to say anything about the Juneteenth. I meant to raise my hand down. Sorry. Blair Blair Beekman. Hi, Blair Beekman here. Uh, nice to hear Paul and Tessa uh, uh, speaking, kind of our regulars here. So was myself. Thank you for uh, this the Juneteenth uh, holiday that you that you're working on and working towards. Uh, it sounds really interesting. Thank you for your work and effort. Uh, it's nice that you, you were bringing everyone in at the time of this item so we can all hear it. With that said, uh, I had a few procedural questions. Um, at the time of orders of the day, was that also to approve the consent calendar without public uh, input? Because you have not talked about the consent calendar yet. That needs public uh, uh, comment time. Uh, I hope you can return to that item uh, when you can. Thank you. Suzanne? Suzanne? Hi there, can you hear me? Yes. Yes, yes thank you very much. Um, I just wanted to say that I oppose making Juneteenth a holiday. I think that it is um, biased and it does not re represent the entire city of San Jose. There are many other ethnicities that have overcome other adverse um, times and we are not honoring them. So I don't know why we're singling out one race. Ellen. 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 Caller Call five one four zero. Yeah, I I kind of remember Sam talking about having an Italian American Heritage Day. If we can have Juneteenth, why not? Italian American Heritage Day. You know, ever since you guys took down the Columbus statue and tried to make it so Italians never existed in this valley, uh, including the mayor himself, who's Italian heritage, uh, seems a bit odd to me. Um, yeah, I like Juneteenth. I mean, I hope we have like a fun festival. I hope other companies offer the day off because the city count city is going to the hall's going to be closed. Another day, you're going to be closed. I'm wondering where you guys found the money to give everybody this new holiday, which is great, but you know, the tax taxpayers have to pay for it. And it's a lot of employees. I mean, you know, your typical cop and fireman, they're going to get X, you know, it's going to be another billion dollars worth, worth of uh, paid time for these guys for all the holidays you're giving everybody. It's crazy. Uh, I'm happy at the same time, but uh, I want to hear about Italian American heritage. Okay. okay. Um, hi, I'm, I just find it, I want to ditto what Paul and Tessa said. I think it's hypocritical that you're celebrating uh, freedom only to have us become slaves to these mandates and passports. So I, I feel like this is a cheap 
virtue signaling and throwing people a bone and it doesn't really have anything to do with celebrating freedom. That's, that's just what I think, thanks. Gerald? Sally? 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 Sally on Zoom? Bobby? Bobby? Bobby, Bobby Evans. Evans. Hi, can you hear me? Yes. yes. Hi. I just wanted to say that if the people have been free since 1865, why just now in 2021 are we having a paid Juneteenth holiday? It makes absolutely no sense. We already have enough paid holidays in the city of San Jose. Thank you. Pelican. Pelican. Hello? Yes, yes go, ahead. go ahead. Hello. Go ahead. Go ahead. Well, I just wanted to say that yet another Another holiday planned, again, I think it's a lot of money and it's a lot of employees and y'all are so busy. You're so busy creating new holidays when you got people who are homeless all over the place. You're trying to force Nazi Germany behaviors on everybody and yet you want to honor someone with a holiday. I mean, really? What the hell are we paying your... Matt, Matt Ricardo? Ricardo? Yeah, I, I just think it's laughable that we're voting for this. Nothing against Juneteenth. I understand the holidays to celebrate freedom. Uh, but at the same time, you guys are looking to vote for vaccine slavery. This is a joke. This is absolutely appalling. And it's a slap in the face to every person in San Jose. Uh, you guys should be ashamed on yourself if you vote yes for this vaccine passport. Karen Ying. We'll have, we'll have ample, ample opportunity, opportunity for people, people to speak, speak on, on the vaccine, vaccine issue. issue. Uh, okay. That's not for this item. Uh, we will cut you off if you're speaking on it. Thank you. Karen Ying. Yes. yes. Hi. Um, I just want to agree with some of the people that said that um, this making this a holiday is disrespecting other communities. I'm of the Asian descent and there were a lot of Chinese immigrants that came here and built California and the railroads um, and it's disrespectful. Thank you. Syntastic. Hi, can you hear me? Yes. yes. I just wanna say that um, redheads used to be burned at the stake for being accused of being witches. Um, and I think that we need a holiday to honor the redheads, especially the redheaded freckled people. So, um, yeah, can we get a holiday for that, please? Shannon? I just think it's disappointing for people not to hear the reason to have a holiday like this. I see it's a mixed bag to have a holiday like this. One disrespects a bunch of other holidays that we could potentially put in this it's a little bit uh a day late this should we should have had a holiday ending all types of slavery and all types of injustices a long time ago but to single out one group i don't think is going to meet um anything that anybody wants there's just going to be something else coming down the road because there's going to be something else that isn't fair and when the next item comes up i guess you will see how uh, we are implementing the things, the very thing that we were trying to get rid of. Thank you. Ricardo. Hi there, can you hear me? Yes. yes. Yeah, I just wanted to uh, kind of tag along with a couple other people who pointed out that 
if we go ahead and, and you know, we're a very diverse community in San Jose. If we plan to carve out a special holiday so you guys can enjoy the day off and get paid and have, have a nice time, um, we're not going to have any time to get anything done. Now, I don't think that that should um, discount the spirit of Juneteenth. It's a wonderful idea. I simply don't believe that we should basically carve out a special holiday for every single person so that we can feel virtuous about it because there's no way we're going to get anything done. To somebody else's point, our streets are overflowing with homeless people, and you guys are up here voting for, for more days off, paid vacations. That's great. Thanks a lot. Great leadership, guys. Caller 9288. Caller 9288. Um, hi, I just want to, uh, I just hope that you guys see that everybody on, that has called so far can see right through this. And it's just really disappointing to have our leadership highlight things that are, while they're important, it's it, in the grand scheme of things, it's it's comical because the hypocrisy is just so blatant. It's just a virtue signal. C. Roy. Roy. One of my favorite. Latin phrases is acta non verba, and that means action, not words. So congratulations, uh, city council, for rewarding non-participants. How does getting, getting an extra day off and all that time and money by these non-participants, non-suffering people, help the people that were really afflicted? Why don't you use this money instead to help people build businesses, build lives instead of closing them down? and getting them off of the government dole so that they can be individual, prosperous, and leaders of their family. This is a disgrace. You are just rewarding yourself. It is self-ingratiating. If I was a minority, I would be up in rebellion. You're not celebrating them. You're profiting off of their hardship. Back to council. Thank, thank you. you. Uh, Mayor Jones. Thank you, Mayor. Um, I want to first of all thank my council colleagues. Uh, I can't tell you how proud I am that we're going to um, make this a city recognized holiday. Uh, I, I do want to um, speak to one point that was raised. Uh, this is not a, a black holiday just for black people. This is an American holiday that recognizes an event in our history that was really a, an inflection point in terms of the direction that our country was going in. It wasn't going to be a, um, a country that recognized individuals and their rights and their rights for freedom, or was it going to be a, co a country that was going to oppress their people? Juneteenth was that inflection point. And again, I can't tell you how proud I am to co-sponsor uh, the memo with Council Member Foley and Jimenez to recognize that event, Juneteenth, as a citywide holiday. So I want to make a motion to accept my memo to recognize Juneteenth, and we're going to have a tremendous Second. celebration next year. Thank you, Council Member. We're going to have a tremendous celebration next year to, to really uh, celebrate Juneteenth the way the, the city of San Jose can. So thank you. Thank you, Vice Mayor. And I will be there and I will encourage everyone in the community to participate because you're right, it's for all of us. Uh, Council Member Esparza. Thank you. Um, I wanted to recognize President Biden for signing this into law into June. And I in particular would like to thank Vice Mayor Jones for his leadership, his consistent um, fight to have Juneteenth recognized by the city. Juneteenth is a reminder of this nation's past and a motivation to work towards equity and social justice. Over this past year, with an historic social justice movement and a pandemic that, that has hit the Latino, African American, and Asian community the hardest, both in terms of deaths, COVID cases, and economically. Additionally, we have seen a rise in racism and hate crimes that makes this recognition even more poignant and important. Thank you, Vice Mayor. Thank you, Councilmember Cohen. Yes, thank you. And 
I just want to say that you know Juneteenth has been celebrated in many places around the country for a long time, um, and I'm glad that this has become more nationally recognized recently, um, and that this summer um, it, it's been it's been uh, actually accepted as a national holiday. So it's important that the city of San Jose uh, recognize that national holiday as well. Um, it's unfortunate that we've had this movement recently uh, across the country by many who want to um, kind of, I don't know whether it's a race or just uh, not teach appropriately our uh, parts of our nation's history that might be uncomfortable to some, but it's really important that we remember and recognize our nation's history um, and understand uh, things that might be uncomfortable to many, but this is uh, this day is an important celebration of an important milestone in our nation's history. And um, I, uh, 30 years ago, remember attending great festivals in the East Bay uh, on Juneteenth, and it's great that our city will now have the ability to um, allow our um, employees to be part of celebrations here in San Jose. And I'm excited about what we'll do next year here in the city to celebrate Juneteenth, and I'm also glad that the city has found a way to make it economical for us to be able to offer it as a holiday without having to go through what we were worried was gonna be an exercise of how we make trade a trade for another day, so I'm glad we're able to, to offer this for our, uh, this important day as a holiday for our employees. So I will, I'm excited to be able to support uh, this, this um, action today. Thank you. Thank you, Council Member Arenas. Thank you. I also just wanted to echo um, my gratitude to our vice mayor for leading this, um, as well as for his message earlier. Um, just some moments ago, I was in the back listening, and I was thinking about um, what we are really celebrating is honoring those people who really had their freedom taken away from them for not 10 years, not 20, not 100, but hundreds and hundreds of years in this country. And that we owe this, this is not a holiday, but this is a recognition of what this country was established by slavery and the capitalism that now thrives because of it. And so if we need to make sure that we nod our, nod our head and acknowledge that through Juneteenth by celebrating the freedom then that's what we need to do. We are turning the corner in terms of, of not just slipping everything under the rug, but really taking a look at what this country has gone through. Um, there's many other groups that have been um, in unfavorable um, positions. Um, and, uh, and this Juneteenth is also for them because it's part of recognizing the freedom not only of uh, those enslaved, but those who might have been enslaved thereafter um, in one way or another. So I'm absolutely going to support this. Thank you. All right, thank you. Any other members of the council like to speak? I uh, appreciate uh, Councilmember Foley and uh, bringing this forward with uh, Vice Mayor and I believe Councilmember Jimenez also, is that right? Uh, thank you for doing so. And I, I really want to emphasize what Vice Mayor Jones said, that this is an American holiday. As Americans, we're certainly proud of our ideals. In fact, we'll be discussing some of those throughout today. Uh, we haven't always lived up to our ideals, though. And uh, this is a moment when we finally can say that our actions were reconciled with our ideals. And that is in a moment uh, that we should celebrate in history. All right. let's. Vote. Jimenez? Yes. Corrales? Yes. Cohen? Aye. Carrasco? Aye. Davis? Yes. Esparza? Yes. Arenas? Yes. Foley? Aye. Mahan? Aye. Jones? Aye. Licardo? Aye. Thank you. All right, thank you. We are going to jump back to the consent calendar. Apparently, I skipped it. Uh, Move so. approval? Second. Second. Let me ask, are there any items to be pulled? Um, I'm gonna clear the list. Councilmember Davis? Item 2.6, please. Okay, 2.6. Are there any other items to be pulled? I just cleared the list, so if you try to notify me, I didn't see you. 
Okay, let's go to Council Member Davis and item 2.6, I believe that is a report from our pension boards? Yes. Great. So last Thursday, uh, the Federated Retirement Board met, um, pension board met, and I have a sort of a good news, bad news um, report, and so I'm gonna start with the bad news. Um, and that is that the, the board started to discuss uh, pension obligation bonds, and they have two consultants that talked about what the strategy should be for investing the funds that may come from pension obligation bonds. Um, one of the things that I found, honestly, a little bit uh, disconcerting is that one of their consultants, Varys, said that they had a couple of options to choose from. They could choose to keep the discount rate the same and lower the contributions from the city on a go forward basis. Oh. That's what we were, that's what we're expecting them to do so that we can pay back the pension obligation bonds. But they have an, another choice. Um, they could choose to keep the contribution levels the same and lower the discount rate. So that is a discussion that the board has not fully had, but is an option that's on the table. So that means that they would not necessarily apply the money that we would give them to the unfunded liability. So I just wanted everyone to be aware that that was um, a discussion that is happening at the board level, um, which I found, as I said, a little bit disconcerting and not what we had been talking about. So I'm looking forward to our um, joint meeting with the boards. There was a question about whether it's going to be on Zoom with so many people. Um, in that, I'm trying to get the date here. We have a joint meeting with them on September 30th, and that will be after we have our council consideration of proceeding with the judicial validation, and that will be on uh, the 21st of September. So just wanted everyone on the council to know that that's a discussion that's happening, that we do not know how they will use the proceeds from any kind of um, bond financing that we do. So that's the bad news. <laughs> the good news is that the pension returned 29.5% in the last year, which put us at the top quartile of our peers with over a billion dollars of assets. So that's our peer group. Um, and as such, they expect that our contributions will be uh, slightly lower in the coming year than they had projected. So that they still can possibly change the discount rate and that and other assumptions could change before we actually know what the expected contribution is going to be um, but for right now it lowers our expected contribution from 213 million dollars to 205 million dollars again this is just for federated um, so there's some more discussion to be had about that i did ask well if we made an overpayment based on what the expected contribution was that we've already and I, con I confirmed with Jim Shannon that we've already put into our budget projections. Um, how would that be treated? One of the board members said, you know, smaller amounts like that, we would consider business as usual. Um, so I assume that means it would go toward the unfunded liabilities. So that's something for us to think about and to discuss, of course, at another time uh, as a council, but just wanted to put all of that out there. So great returns, still don't know what they're gonna do with uh, any bond funds. Thank you, Councilor Davis. I appreciate you raising that to our attention. That will certainly be a topic of discussion on the 30th. Okay, any questions on Councilmember Davis or comments on that item? Okay, um, then let's uh, hear uh, public comment on consent. I'm going to remind all of our members of our public, we are only hearing um, comment on the items on consent. If anyone wants to veer into other topics, we'll cut you off because we all have time uh, elsewhere on the agenda for those other topics. Tessa Woodmancy. That's right. Tessa Woodmancy. You know, all the money actually we're talking about are, you know, on, you know, the, the retirement fund and how much money it's earning. And when we put our money into stocks or bonds, whatever it is that is earning us money, um, it's really based so much of our money, all of our money really is based on fossil fuel is a fossil fuel. That's the economy that has created the money economy. And so, and also the city of San Jose is actually investing in fossil fuels and that's wrong. 
We need to divest from fossil fuels. We need to be off of fossil fuels completely. We shouldn't be investing in it. That's what there's a big push for that in our schools and that you know the climate activists are working on that. And we all need to be putting that uh, you know as a priority in our charter of how we invest. It needs to be fossil fuel free and all of our actions need to be make, moving us towards zero consumption of fossil fuels mm -hmm. and keeping it in the ground and not making money from it. So that's Blair Beekman. Hi, Blair Beekman here. Thank you for uh, Council, uh, Councilperson Davis's words uh, that there's going to be a joint pension uh, and, and city council meeting at the end of September. Uh, on top of that, along with um, what is a transportation uh, joint meeting of the transportation department and city council this Friday, a really intelligent smart cities uh, digital divide issues at city council last week. And yesterday there was a, um, uh, there's gonna be an upcoming economic uh, task force uh, for the fall and next year led, it's gonna have parts of it by uh, school districts gonna be, gonna be a part of that hopefully. There's some really interesting democratic practices we're going to be working on this fall and into next year to address the issues of COVID and our community. Thank you very much. Uh, I hope it's a good open process and your staff is doing a really good job to uh, develop uh, what can be a good community dialogue for ourselves. Thank you. Shannon. Sorry, that was for the next item. John Sorry, uh, just trying to get moved over to the other side, Tony. Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. It I'll worked. Back Good back job, Council. John. Okay. <laughs> we love to hear public participation from our directors. All right, uh, let's vote on consent. This is all the items on consent. Jimenez? Yes. Prowess? Yes. Cohen? Aye. Carrasco? Aye. Davis? Yes. Esparza? Yes. Arenas? Yes. Foley? Aye. Mahan? Aye. Jones? Aye. Licardo? Aye. Thank you. All right. Uh, next item is item 3.4, which is the vaccine requirement. Uh, we have, I know, many hundreds of folks on Zoom, as well as many members of the public who'd like to speak, um, uh, who are here, I should say, in person. Um, and we'll be escorting them from uh, the overflow room into the city chambers to speak uh, in order. Um, I wanted to uh, observe that given the large numbers, uh, we're gonna see how this goes based on uh, how many hands we've got, because we also need to manage a calendar that will get us done by midnight to meet the curfew. Um, so we're gonna give this a run and I'm going to uh, close public testimony uh, at six o'clock, and hopefully that will be enough time. I should actually check. Do we have any time certain items prior to six? We don't? No. Okay, so we'll close public testimony on this item at six o'clock, and hopefully that will be enough time for us to be able to hear from the many members of the community who'd like to speak. Uh, again, everyone will be restricted to a minute, and we appreciate your patience with that. Uh, but we want to make sure we can get to the many other items that are also on the calendar. Uh, so uh, on item 3.4, um, I believe we do have the staff presentation. Is that right? Or are you just here for questions, Dolan Lee? We're here for any questions with data to support that if needed, Mayor. Okay, great. Uh, I see you've got the, you've got some, uh, Slides lined up. Dolan, did you want to speak to those or do you want to wait till we, we ask questions? I think we'll go ahead, Mayor. So, okay. um, yeah, we'll, we'll move forward. So, okay. um, good afternoon, Honorable Mayor, City Council, members of the public, and city staff. My name is Dolan Beckel. I'm the interim deputy director and assistant director of the Emergency Operations Center. Um, we wanted to provide some data uh, about the pandemic and when we last left our discussion last week. So to be clear, the United States is in the fourth wave of the pandemic. If you look at the upper left-hand chart, you'll see the four waves very clearly. The far left-hand side is when the pandemic started in March 2020. You'll see the summer surge slightly higher. You'll see the third wave 
over the winter, which was the most severe and deadly. And you see on the far right-hand side of that upper left-hand chart, the fourth wave, which is increasing dramatically. Locally, uh, key indicators continue to head in the wrong direction. Since we last met, which was just last week, the number of new cases in the county increased 29% to 345 on a seven-day rolling average. The number of ICU beds dropped 23% to 56 available within the county. And the number of cumulative deaths from COVID-19 increased 10 from last week to this week. Next slide. Uh, it would help if I told myself what to do, wouldn't it? Next slide. Um, <laughs> this slide uh, shows that we need to quickly flatten the curve. The Delta variant is 2.5 times more infectious than the original strain we've seen previously. To put that in perspective, the, uh, a person infected with the original strain in April um, versus the person infected with the strain of Delta variant today, the person today has 1,000 times more the viral load of the virus in their respiratory system. That's why it's more transmissible, that's why it's more infectious, that's why it's infecting children, and that's why we have to move quickly to flatten the curve. Um, to put into perspective what 1,000 times means, because sometimes those five digits are not very impactful, uh, yet last week there was 30 people in the council chambers. If you multiply that by 1,000, that's half of Levi Stadium. That gives you an order of magnitude understanding of what this 1,000 times more viral load means in terms of the severity of the Delta variant. That ends our presentation. Okay, thank you, Don. Um, I uh, obviously brought this item forward and I just wanna explain briefly why I did so. Um, first, there's not much question among experts in the field, scientists, uh, that indoor settings are particularly risky uh, for the spread of the virus. Uh, and that's why we have mask mandates indoors. Uh, that is why we are looking and considering this vaccination requirement. In particular, having large numbers of people indoors uh, just multiplies the risk. Uh, there's obviously no surefire way of eliminating risk of COVID transmission. Uh, we don't live in that world. We live in a world in which we need to take reasonable measures that can reduce risk. And this certainly seems like a reasonable measure. We have potentially 18,000 people come into the arena. Uh, we know that the sure, there's no surefire way of uh, ensuring that everyone can uh, be in a, a, an arena of that size uh, to avoid contracting uh, coronavirus, but we do know that we can reduce the risk. Uh, I have also heard from many small business owners, uh, from operators at these facilities, uh, that they believe it'll help more members of our public feel safe in being at these facilities, uh, and that, in fact, will help support uh, what many of them are trying to do, which is to stay open. We want our businesses to stay open. We know livelihoods depend upon it. And so taking these reasonable steps, these measured steps, is essential for ensuring that we do not continue to see uh, the rapid rise of infections as we have been seeing. Now, I know there's been some news I saw in this morning's Mercury News, certainly discussion in other counties where they believe it may be the case in the state and other counties, they believe that the um, the latest wave, this fourth wave, may be peaking. And that would be happy news if in fact that were true. Uh, I think those who read the article understand that there is some just question about that. And we don't know yet because I know there has been some issues with regard to the data that Kaiser provides to the state database and the local databases. And it appears there had not been a smooth transmission of that data and we'll know in the next few days exactly what is going on. So um, that is something that I think a lot of health officers are eagerly awaiting as they sort that out. Um, and certainly as we learn more information, uh, as we get more data and the science provides us with a better guidance, uh, we will pivot. Uh, and I hope there will be a day soon when we no longer need any of these requirements. 
Uh, but as long as we are seeing our ICUs filling, as long as people continue to die at an unacceptable rate uh, in this pandemic, uh, we need to take these measured steps. So I proposed um, this first step that we protect our residents and our workers at these large facilities where we know we have uh, a large number of people gathering indoors. And we can certainly consider as we see the data and the science that informs us from cities like San Francisco and New York about more extensive uh, vaccination requirements. We learn more from those cities' experiences, including uh, how it has affected their small businesses. That will provide us some information on which we can base any future decisions. Uh, for now, however, we are only considering uh, acting on a vaccination mandate for our city large facilities, where we have, of course, sporting events, music, and other kinds of events where large numbers of people may gather. Okay, so we'll now go to public comment. Tony, I know we're managing with folks who are helping to escort others into the chambers, so I'll let you take it away. Yes, so I'm gonna explain the process so the people in all of the rooms and on Zoom can understand. I'm going to be calling, I'm gonna do a list of 10 names to start with because some people have to work their way over here. So please be quiet and listen carefully to the names that I'm calling and then you can make your way to the microphone. I'm gonna start with people who I know are in council chambers. Kimberly, AC, just the initials AC, so that's Kimberly, AC, Ruben Rosso, Karen K, go ahead, the, make your way down to the microphone. If, if you I'm, could come down as your yeah, name's called, just ask gonna, you to line up. That'd now be great. I'm going to call some names from room 120 so they can start moving over here. Okay. Nan, Ryan Sage, David Sussman, Alice, Elizabeth, and Robert. You are in room 120. Make your way over here. Go ahead, okay. state your name. My name is Kimberly and um, I'm a COVID survivor. I had COVID and pneumonia really, really bad. <laughs> and um, it took a while to get over that. I've actually had it two more times since, and both times my symptoms greatly reduced. Um, and um, my husband has an autoimmune disorder, and uh, I was responsible and kept him from that, and he has not gotten it. And um, I feel like, um, I'm concerned about taking a vaccine when I have these antibodies, what it's gonna to do to my body. And as my husband with the autoimmune, what will it do to his body? It concerns me, uh, what I'm hearing. It is not your job to tell me what I need to do with my body. That's between me and my doctor. That's between our family and our doctors. And I am not a non-vaxxer, but I choose uh, to not vaccinate. And I feel like I, uh, that is overreaching uh, to say that you're. Thank you. Thank you. Dear city council and mayor, uh, please remember that according to the Pledge of Allegiance you just took, okay, you are loyal to the Republic of the United States of America that is forever united under God and you are to stand united for liberty and justice for all. This vaccine mandate is wrong, and it violates everything you just said you stood for when you stated you pledged of allegiance. Furthermore, if you at all care for your eternal soul, here are some wise words from your creator, okay? Nevertheless, if you warn a righteous man that the righteousness, that the righteous should not sin, and he does not sin, he shall surely live because he took a warning. Also, you will have delivered your soul. Be righteous and vote no on the vaccine mandate. I'm also a COVID survivor. Thank you. Hi, my name is um, AC and I'm, I'm the ambassador of Jesus Christ. And thank you, Lord, for getting me here and all of my uh, friends here. And I, have, I oppose this um, proposal of vaccine passports and uh, mandates. And I know I want to declare God's word in Psalm 91, 99. 
The Lord reigns in this meeting, in Jesus' name. Let the people tremble. He dwells between the cherubim. Let the earth be moved. The earth, the Lord is great in Zion, and he is high above all the peoples. Let them praise your great and awesome name. He is holy. The king's strength also loves justice. You have established equity. You have ex executed justice and righteousness in Jacob. Exalt the Lord our God and worship at his footstool. He is Hi, my name's Karen, and I appreciate this opportunity to talk. I wish I didn't have to wear this because my voice is already a little bit challenged, but I think there's four sets of laws that are being violated by this uh, vaccine passport, and maybe not in any necessary order, but <clears throat> first, the Constitution is being violated. Our, our right to life. This vaccine has killed people, and we don't know who it's going to kill, right? So it's a problem. The second set of laws is HIPAA. Maybe that's just one law, but that's privacy, medical privacy, privacy from your past, privacy from treatment, privacy from your present condition. This vaccine passport will completely violate privacy. The third set of laws is the Nuremberg edicts. We don't treat humans as guinea pigs. This, this, this vaccine is Your time is up. Your time is, your time is up. No, your time is up. Before we go to the next speaker, before the, you can go ahead and walk up to the mic, but I'm gonna call five more names. Um, Kay Musich. Chris Griffin, Colleen, Joseph N., and Katie. Go ahead. Welcome. I'm a man, and I'm against the mandate and the uh, passports. Um, I personally know people injured or even de died from the vaccines. Um, I don't think they're safe. I think there are a lot of concerns, but I am not here to, to I, I'm not against the vaccines per se. I am against the mandate. I think it should be a personal choice for what happens to our bodies, what we inject into our bodies. I think it should be, uh, we should have the right to choose in this um, country, in the land of the free, and this is not free for it to be mandated. I'm also against the passports um, because I, I feel it's a, a discrimination. It causes discrimination, and I think it's a violation of our medical history information privacy. So I um, ask that this would not be passed. Thank you. Uh, thank you uh, for allowing me to speak and everybody else. I just want to say that uh, I'm against this. I would say that this plan to implement this passport doesn't actually do what people are thinking it's going to be doing. I think it's forcing people who don't know, either don't know where they lie on this or disagree with it to have to do it, which is not going to be in their best interest. And it's going to cause more divide between the people. And this is going to further push the, the left versus the right. Um, I hope other speakers are better than me. So <laughs> thank you for your time. Can you state your name? What's that? Can you state your name? Ryan Sage. Thank you. Welcome. Thank you. History is never, ever on the side of the segregationists. Jim Crow South, Germany in World War II, doesn't matter where or when, never once does history look back and say, wow, segregation and discrimination saved the day. Mayor Licardo, your memorandum and your proposed vaccine mandate is 100% segregation and 100% discrimination. You know who knows this? 
Kim Janey, the mayor of Boston, Massachusetts. She's the first African-American mayor of Boston, and she's the first female mayor of Boston. When she was asked about proof of vaccination requirements in Boston, she said, and I quote, there's a long history in this country of people needing to show their papers. She made it clear that Boston is not a show your papers city. And my message for you today is San Jose is not a show your papers city. This mandate is the dawn of Jim Crow San Jose, this mandate spits in the face of the American tradition, tradition of liberty and justice for all. This mandate. Your time, is, your time is up. Your time is up. Let me just announce if, if folks do not terminate. We ask that everyone could please confine their comments so that way we can hear more members of the public. Uh, it's very important for us to hear from everyone. Thank you. Thank you, dear city council wait, and mayor. Wait, hold on, before we start your timer, I need everybody to state their name uh, when Michelle they come up Yen. to the mic. Thank you. All right. Uh, dear mayor and council members, San Jose is a great city with most profound technology innovation in the world. It is actually based on the spirit of freedom. The freedom is our you know, essential spirit here. So please vote no with the vaccine mandate. And you know, people, you should trust people to stand on their own feet and to think with their own brain. People will make decisions to, to protect their life and manage the risk. You should trust the people. So please vote no and help us keep thriving in this great city. Thank you. Good afternoon, Mayor Sam Licardo and my council member, Ralph Perales. My name is Chris Griffin. I'm a licensed contractor with the state and I'm vote, asking you to vote no on this vaccine mandate. Um, one thing I wanna bring to everybody's attention in this whole room, which you guys don't understand, I'm a contractor. I've worked with state parks, national parks. Last week, the FCC was sued by the Children's Health Defense Network over the 5G technology. And what they said in the case, the U.S. Supreme Court, D.C. published August 13th, court ruled the FCC failed to consider the non-cancer evidence regarding adverse health effects of wireless technology when it decided the 1996 radio frequency emission guidelines protect the public health. So it's Children's Health Defense Network and attorney Robert F. Kennedy Jr. filed 11,000 pages of evidence of harm from 5G and wireless technology. Sir, I'm sorry, this isn't uh, pertinent to the topic. Thank you. I'm sorry, it's not pertinent. Thank you. Tony? It's me, yeah. Hold on, that's mine. Sorry. Council members, thank you very much for this opportunity. I would like to make two point. Oh, my name is Kay Music. I'm from Morgan Hill. I'd like to make two points in opposition of public mandates. Vaccination with the FDA approved vaccine means accepting possible death as a result, as stated by the FDA and CDC. Adverse events are much higher from the vaccine than contracting the virus and getting well naturally at the rate of approximately 99%. Where there is risk, there must be a choice. Who will be liable for that risk? No one. The vaccinated are four times more at risk, and a link to that information was emailed to the city council this morning. Measures taken to date have made no difference in case rates. But vaccine facts aside, the example Hi, your time is up. My name is Katie and my neighbor got the vaccine and he laid on the floor five days with no attention. He was perfectly healthy. I've known more people that have died of this vaccine than people that haven't. And also people that are getting the vaccine are also getting COVID. So it is not stopping the virus. It's actually accelerating it. So that may be why there's an increase. Also, this is very discriminating. And they, if you look at blood samples before and after the vaccine, the 
perfectly healthy blood cells, and then after they are mutated and they clot, and they're, it's just, you need to look at what happens to people's blood when they get these vaccines. These are deadly vaccines, and we haven't even seen the repercussions yet. And medical science has proven that this is detrimental to our health. We want to stand up for our health. We have a right. We should not be discriminated against because we don't want to inject an untested med medical invasive treatment into our bodies. We have the right to be able to go free. And I've lived here my whole life. I'm a native California. I've never seen such a mess. And this is going to hurt businesses. Your time is up. Your time is up. Please leave. Go ahead. My name is Elizabeth Gonzalez, and I serve the one true living God, Nabura. And I'm against this vaccine because I know people who have died from it, and most people are not aware of it. And um, under California Civil Code 43, I have the right to be free from physical harm. Wearing a mask harms people from preventing us from breathing fresh air. Under California Civil Code 46, it is against the law to say someone has an infectious disease when they don't. Wearing a mask is suggesting that someone is carrying an infectious disease when they don't have one. Continually being tested is suggesting that someone has an infectious disease. Under California Code 12926Q, define your religious expression to include what you wear and don't wear. Hi, next speaker. Your time is up, the next speaker. <laughs> State your name. My name is Joseph Nettemeyer. Uh, it's been 500 days since uh, two weeks from slow the spread to now show us the papers. It has morphed into biomedical tyranny. You know, we sit here and the council says that we want to be inclusive, that we want to, you know, represent everybody except for the unvaxxed and unclean people. That is a just complete lies that you guys are pushing. Sam Ricardo, you say that the pandemic is of the unvaccinated, yet Santa Clara County has one of the highest vaccination rates in the nation, at over 80% being fully vaccinated and 86% having the first shot. Stop trying to force your lies that this is our safety and then when we sell cigarettes and weed that we can smoke and sell fast food that clogs our arteries and causes many other health issues. You say, don't say exercise, eat healthier, wash your hands instead just say take the vaccine and obey. I say vote no on this tyranny. You guys sit there and say Juneteenth is to recognize the freedoms and liberties that this country has represented. These mandates are not. What this word is if you vote yes for this shows that you are hypocrite. Hi, before you go, I want to call the next five people so they can queue up Ariadne or Ariadna. Um, Z L O T C O Zlotko, Rebecca, Vanessa, and Valley. Please um, queue up and go ahead and state your name. My name's Alice. Do you know Pfizer does not even mandate their employee to take their vaccine? I wonder why. Do you know only 50% of Fauci's staff, own staff, choose to take the vaccine? If they're not mandating it to their own uh, employee, neither should you to mandate it to anyone. You quoted San Francisco as the model you are following. You're kidding me, right? No one here wants San Jose to be turned into urine-infested, giant homeless camp uh, full of uh, by communist San Francisco that's also actively destroying their own business uh, with the mandate. So if that's what you want, please resign now and go live there instead, okay? I believe you're smart. So I, so I request that you vote no to vaccine mandate. Hello, hello. Vote no on mandates. Mandates for citizens to take an experimental drug where the long-term effects are really unknown is beyond a crime of humanity. The lies beyond, uh, being used to justify this crime are obvious. 
to subject our people to experimental technology that's consistently failed due to deaths of lab, and lab animals is evil and must not be continued. Mandates for citizens to show their papers must not be repeated. We've been here before. If you didn't know, the city council is just as expendable as any one of us. Whoever is supporting the wokeness, I gotta tell you, it's not gonna save you. Thank you. Go ahead, next speaker. As soon as the, the speaker prior to you is done, please go ahead and walk forward to the microphone. The, the quicker we do that process, the more speakers can speak. Good afternoon. My name is Dr. Colleen Conger. I'm here to serve you an affidavit, Mayor Licardo and council members here today. Come now, affiant, notice to agent is notice to principal, and notice to principal is notice to agent. Colleen M. Conger Brass, as one of the people, as found in Article 2, Section 1, California Constitution, making the following claims that you and your agents may provide due care. I'm not going to be able to read through the whole thing, but for savior of time, I'm going to read over a few things. Uh, Affiant is part of a private membership association, and no government authority has been granted authority over the people's private health determinations. If you believe you have constitutional authority, please provide sworn testimony showing where you have been granted authority by the people to demand them to follow at one of their servants' health orders. Next speaker. Your time is up, next speaker. The next speaker, please walk forward. Please no, do Please not. Don't step towards her. Hi, my name is Dr. Margarita Orlova. I don't have her. Uh, and I am saying this on behalf of all allergic people of California or of San, our city of San Jose. Uh, anaphylactic shock. This is the result of the vaccination for them. Anaphylactic shock is a shock leads, which leads to death. And remember, you allergic to the spike protein, the foreign protein of the vaccine. All the vaccines have the spike protein. It's poisonous. It was confirmed by the inventor of the spike protein. And it's poisonous. And you will be vi the victim. Your time is up. Next. Can the next speaker please board? Um, while the next speaker comes forward, I have Roha Adams, Monica Song, Christine, Teresa, and Doug. State your name. Yeah. My name is Valley Gardner. I am against the vaccine for several reasons. There are many people who are very sensitive to many things, including vaccines, who may not even know until they have received a vaccine and it's too late. Second, I know of, fr of friends who have lost loved ones from the vaccines. A friend's mother, a friend's grandmother, a young healthy man who was 27 years old. He had just started a new job and was on the job only a week when his employer said he had to take the vaccine or lose his job. He took the vaccine and died in his sleep. By the way, he was an only child. Do you people not care about these people? There are many deaths that have occurred from the vaccines, not to mention many other side effects that have happened in people and blood clots in otherwise healthy young people and people of all ages. I would like to know what gives you the right to dictate that we should get a vaccine when we choose not to, and you don't know my body. Furthermore, I say people should get right with God, start taking communion every day for protection from. Next speaker. Go ahead.
Good afternoon, I'm gonna go fast. This is Vanessa Payne. City Council members, this is segregation and discrimination. Consider number one that this vaccine does not stop contraction or transmission. Studies are showing reactions to COVID strains after vaccinations are sometimes still severe. Your own information shows that the ICUs are down and are not overwhelmed. Listen to medical professionals all over the world who are telling what's going on, but are being silenced, including the VP of Pfizer, who is not an anti-vaxxer, by the way. And while precious lives have been lost, almost everybody recovers from the COVID strains, creating their own immunity. And the very thing you say you're trying to prevent, which is death, is turning out to be the result of severe side effects from this very vaccine that you're pushing. Number two, face your constituents. Thousands of your San Jose residents and business owners don't have all that you have, so this is really an easy decision for you. Mayor, you have not talked to the same business owners I have. You're putting their businesses, their livelihood, and people's lives in danger, coercing them to do something that only they and their doctors should decide. You're telling the very community that you claim to care about that they're not going to be able to patronize, they're not going to be able to support their own community. Next speaker. Before you speak, um, I'm going to call a few more names because the queue is short. I have Wyatt Mickus, Asaya Azaw, Carson Atherley, Mike McClock, Maureen, and Mark. Go ahead. My name is Doug. Um, elected leaders must apply the least restrictive and invasive government interference of life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. Freedom to choose how to worship, work, and speech are protected constitutional rights. Lockdowns and government overreach are unconstitutional and have been proven to not work. Forced vaccination and masks are not done in a free society. I strongly oppose a vax mandate for the Chinese communist virus. There are many proven therapeutics and lifestyle choices that should be allowed as options. It's a choice to choose not to get vaxxed and or not wear a face muzzle. Then you're, if you do, choose not to do that, your voice and yourself are segregated from the public forum. Just like in China, Venezuela, Cuba, North Korea, Hong Kong, Santa Clara County, and now Australia. I strongly oppose this vax mandate. Good afternoon, I'm Monica Song. My husband and I, my four, four children, and my 72-year-old mother are all COVID survivors. I oppose this ordinance requiring proof of vaccination in public and private places. You're not fighting against a virus with this proposed ordinance, but against the people you represent, against our freedom to research and make our own informed medical decisions, against our religious freedom to object to a vaccine developed on the cells of aborted babies, and against our right to life, liberty, and pursuit of happiness. Will you assume responsibility for any harms caused by the vaccines to us? These include Bell's palsy, seizures, blood clots, myocarditis, and even death. It is un-American and unethical to force people to receive any medical procedure or substance against their informed dissent. Many friends and family have reluctantly received the vaccine, not because they believe in safety and efficacy, but because they want to keep their jobs, attend college, play sports, and attend special events. That's it. This mandate will corner people even further and will lead to, to further you losing trust and support Next speaker, please come forward. Hello, I'm Rosy Adams, and I just want to tell you that you guys enforcing this vaccine on us is wrong. You are crossing on my rights and my family's rights, and this is wrong. You have no right to tell us what we should put in our bodies. My body, my choice. Do not impose this on my kids. As we are recalling Gavin Newsom, we will recall you if you do this, because we have the right. We are free in the United States. This is not Cuba. This is not another country. Please respect our wishes. Hello, my name is Asaya Azza, and I'm here to object uh, to the vaccine passports. It's in line with the mark of the beast, and if any of you vote for it, everyone here today will sign up to recall you. Listeners, if you are angry, join us at SantaClaraRecall.com. We are adding a city council recall to the supervisor recall. Forcing vaccine passports is not only a violation of our constitutional rights. Would you ask a person with HIV AIDS to reveal their status and walk around with a card? And if they refuse, would you deny them the right to buy 
food, work, or participate in other facets of society? No. One of the arguments for getting the vaccine is to protect those who aren't able to get the vaccine due to health disparities. Well, if these same people are unable to get a vaccine, how can they get a vaccine card? Will they now be discriminated against and be forced to starve to death? None of you have the authority to decide what happens to anyone's body but your own. This is not 1930s Germany. The residents of this city and county say no to the vaccine passports. Thank you. My name is Maureen, and I oppose your, your choice to make this a mandate. It is my body, my choice. I have a right to make that choice and still be part of a community where I can buy groceries, where I can go places. It is not your decision to tell me what to do with my body, and I have a right to work and be part of society and live with making the choice for myself not to have this vaccine. And I appreciate your consideration. Okay, well, before you speak, Nick, um, I'm calling people from room 120. So if you're in room 120, please listen carefully. Jane K, Lori Heskett, Jennifer R, D Roman, and Dorota Nusis. Thank you. Go ahead. State your name. Well, my name is Carson Atherley, and I have the privilege of serving as an assistant pastor at Calvary Chapel San Jose. And I am here today primarily on behalf of the people of our congregation who approach me daily regarding these vaccine requirements. And I'm also here today to remind you of your duty. A vaccine requirement, a vaccine mandate, is a complete violation of our God-given liberties protected in the Constitution of the United States of America. And a vaccine requirement is a complete violation of people's religious convictions. This is complete tyranny masqueraded as safety. And you are trying to capitalize on and use people's fear of death to strip them of their God-given liberties. But it is the Lord Jesus Christ who came to liberate people of just that, the fear of death. It says in Romans chapter 6 that the gift of God is et eternal life through Christ Jesus our Lord. I'm here again today to remind you that you cannot mandate something that's unconstitutional. You cannot mandate a person to violate their God-given convictions, and you will stand before him and give an Next speaker. Hello, my name is Mike McClure. I am the pastor of Calvary Chapel San Jose, and I'm also a police chaplain for the San Jose PD. So I'm here today to represent our police officers in our church and those first responders that will lose their job when you guys vote yes. And there's a lot of people that are going to lose their job. There's a lot of people really mad. And, you know, Mayor Licardo, you may not remember uh, Gonzalez, but uh, he was recalled for things just not even as bad as this. So you guys, this is serious. Your, 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 your future political career is on the line. Whether you respect me or not, doesn't matter. I, I only care about what God thinks, but I do honor your authority, your position. But when you cross the line, and that's what you're doing with people in the First Amendment, you guys gotta study the Constitution. It's amazing, it's an amazing thing. But there is hope for you if you will listen to what the people are saying. Don't listen to whoever's buying you off, who you're working for, I don't care if it's Big Tepper or Big Pharma. Please, do what's right for the people. There was 2,700 people that died of this only two months ago, and now there's only 1,700. Did a thousand people come back to life or are the numbers all wrong? So think about it because your career is. Next speaker, please come forward. Hi, my name is Mark and this is not a party issue. Everyone I speak to, all different party affiliations, a lot of them are very angry at what they're seeing. They're very worried about what they're seeing. They have concerns and they don't feel like they're being heard. And my question here is I see a is to adopt the SAP and the big facilities, and we already have a B, which assumes A will get passed, to expand at the gyms, indoor dining, theaters, privately owned facilities, service uh, the general public. Is this, is this a given? Are we here wasting our time? Because it feels like that sometimes. I don't know if you guys feel that way. Every time I walk on the news, if someone has an opinion, for good reason or not, that the vaccine may not be the best thing for them, they're shut down, they're silenced. I have people who have been taken off social media and I didn't even know they were against vaccines. I don't get it. Please help us. Someone needs to stand up for us and you guys are elected to do that. So I'm asking you on behalf of everyone here, there's a lot of people as you know, please come help us. Listen to us. Next speaker, please come forward. Mr. 
Mr. Mayor, Council, please raise your hand if you've ever been informed by the public, learned anything, and changed your opinion before you vote. Can you state your name? My name is Jane Kearney. We please raise your hand if you've ever changed your opinion. This is not a time for opinion. us to respond. It's a time for okay. us to listen to public comment. Thank you. Those um, who invited the gentleman to speak on behalf and share the Buddhist prayer today would be reminded that he would not be allowed to give that prayer in communist China, where bureaucrats make the most profound decisions in citizens' lives. So many fled to this country to escape the kind of tyranny you're considering today. You swore to the uphold the Constitution. You swore to the Pledge of Allegiance for liberty this afternoon. That supersedes your fears and your personal opinions. As you virtue signal today about championing minorities, you're on the brink of abusing the smallest minority, the most vulnerable. That is the individual. I've already attended the funeral of a 27-year-old, a healthy young man who bled out after the vaccine. Are you going to personally be responsible and join me at the next one? Ask why doctors who are treating on the front lines effectively are not being listened to. Ask why natural... Can the next speaker please come forward? Also, I'm calling names from room 118. Um, so if you're in room 118, please listen carefully. Janice... Sue, Paul Soto. That's Janice, Sue, and Paul Soto from room 118. Go ahead and state your name. My name is Demary Roman. I have a son who suffered an injury according, because of the uh, vaccine. I also have a daughter who will suffer anaphylactic uh, um, uh, results of, of such a thing. Um, I thank you for allowing me to be heard today on Agenda 3.4. I pray you will listen. This is no longer about health with a 99% recovery rate according to the CDC and science. This is now about control, control of all our freedoms, control of your freedoms. The good news is you're now on notice that you're accountable to the one true and almighty God, the ultimate and almighty judge. I pray you will do the right thing. Thank you and God bless. I'm going to call. Hi there, my name is Wait, Jennifer, you... and I'm a voter in San. I'm disgusted that this conversation is even taking place. What is the point of a vaccine? Well, it's to prevent transmission of a disease. The so-called COVID vaccine is totally ineffective in doing that. Breakthrough cases are happening all around the world. 77% of the hospitalized people in Iceland are breakthrough cases. Over half of the people in Great Britain. Breakthrough cases, hospitalized. This does not even work. After, what, seven months, of uh, people who got vaccines earlier in the year are now being told they need a third booster shot? This is becoming about money and power. It has nothing to do with health. Um, earlier today, one of the council members mentioned that we were at an inflection point in our country's history. He is absolutely right. You all are raising a sleeping giant, and we will not take this anymore. We are pushing back. You are notice. Thank you. Okay, before the next speaker goes, I'd like to call um, speakers from room 120 to come over. Vicki Lan, Vicki Lan, Jeff Badilla, Lan Wynn, Warren. Go ahead, state your name. Hi, my name is Dorota Nyefchas, and I'm here to speak out against this medical coercion that's happening all around to us. It's really disheartening to see things repeated from Nazi Germany, where medical professionals coerced people into medical procedures that they were against. The Nuremberg Code exists for a reason, and the US ratified the Nuremberg Code. This is medical coercion. No one should be coerced into a medical procedure, not in San Jose, not anywhere in the Bay Area. Next speaker. My name is Janice, and I'm here to say, please vote no on this. Um, these forced vaccines are wrong. The lie that science supports these vaccines as safe completely disregards every individual who has suffered harm by vaccine, including thousands of documented deaths and many undocumented harms and deaths. Taking an individual's sacred right to their own health care decisions disregards every American who has sacrificed and served and fought and died for our freedoms in this country. You are telling our families their sacrifice was worthless and you have the right to make medical decisions for us. This is a sacred freedom. Every one of our brave law enforcement 
officers who stood here and protected you guys today are being forced to take this regardless of the fact that they can't protect themselves. They aren't being able to protect themselves from something that's going to be injected into their body if they want to keep their job. All these officers, all the nurses that are on the front lines are not being given it. Thank you. Next speaker. I think I got it. Hello, my name is Sue. Um, this is absolute tyranny. You must vote no on these vaccine passports. We have gone from stop the spread in two weeks to show me your papers. It is a complete and utter violation of our civil liberties, our God-given human rights, and our medical privacy. In addition, it's a complete violation of the Nuremberg Code. Two of the key components of that are voluntary informed consent. The risk must be weighed against the expected outcome. Mandating the inoculations to participate in daily life is a violation of voluntary informed consent since people will feel coerced to do this. People who have received this injection are part of the largest human trial in human history. The manufacturers of these inoculations are exempt from liability for any injuries or deaths that their product might cause, and there have been substantial amounts of deaths and injury. In addition, there is absolutely no long-term safety data on these jabs and only minimum sub short-term data on it. We know that the short-term, there's been a lot of problems. There is a tremendous amount of data on these. Thank you. Next speaker. Thank you. The next speaker. Uh, Paul Soto from the Horseshoe. Um, I honestly don't care what you do because you're not going to follow the Constitution. You're not going to follow the law. The way that you're going to institute this law is one of two ways. You're going to starve the person to death by not allowing them to work, or you will point a gun at them, point it at their head, and say, I will kill you if you don't get away from us. That's how you're going to institute the law. So well, I'm not really concerned about the actual mandates or like what you do here, because you're not even going to follow the Constitution because you're in violation of it already. The way that you're going to enforce and say that I am right is by might because that is the foundation of this country. I'm a sixth generation Chicano. And what that means is that I've dealt with things far deadlier than COVID. I've dealt with racism. I have dealt with greed. I have dealt with indifference and inhumanity. So if you think COVID scares me, chale, homie. I oppose the unlawful time limitation on public comments under the Ra Ralph Brown Act. God made the world in seven days, so if you have to stay here for seven days and seven nights to listen to your constituents, then so be it, especially on the issue of vax mandate. People have turned to Facebook to share their vax stories. One group that reached almost 65,000 members was removed overnight for no reason. The factcheck.org company is funded by an organization that holds over 1.8 billion in stock in a vaccine company. The CDC director, Dr. Walensky, admits that the vaccine caused increased risks in severe disease amongst the vaccinated. The FDA said that the convalescent blood can be used for COVID treatment. However, the Red Cross says that if you take the vaccine, you are not eligible to donate convalescent blood. This is the blood that has antibiotics in there. Obviously, something's wrong with the vaccine. Now that you know this, and if you're still considering forcing this on the San Jose residents, who do you take orders from? And why are you trying to kill San Jose residents? Hey, next speaker, come to the mic. Um, before you speak, I'm calling the, the last people in room 120. So if you're in room 120, please listen. Pierre, Antonio, Delilah, Catherine, and Patricia. Go ahead, state your name. Oh, well, my name's Warren. Um, I wonder if you guys have children. Um, I, don't think, I don't think I've seen any kind of crazier amount of psychosis and fear mongering than I've seen in the last year. More than COVID has killed, you can look it up. Google's already probably censoring it. Let's be honest, we all know what's going on. Um, children have been hanging themselves, suicides way up, domestic violence has been way up. This is not about health. When Ricardo talks, I can see him reading his notes, I can see him sweating bullets. Is it a good time to be a politician? Which side of history do you guys want to be on two years from now? How easy is it to predict the future? 
society has something called stable. In physics, there's a concept of like a stable equilibrium. A ball wants to roll downhill, a pressure cooker wants to explode. Do you guys want a pressure cooker or do you guys want to find a stable equilibrium and push back against this insanity? Uh, my name is Vicky Lan. Um, I'm uh, Chinese uh, from Taiwan uh, 25 years ago. Uh, my English is a little bit. Well, I hope you can, you don't vote the yes for the vaccine mandate before you find more truth. Actually, it's lots of the information come out as the vaccine kills so many people and only 1% be report the deaths. And that's why we don't know. Maybe it's not true, but you need to find out more. And this vaccine, uh, the vaccine company, they have so many profit. They control the media. So the misleading, maybe you be misleading by the, the wrong information. And even the, the, the CDC, FDA, uh, Pfizer, and uh, uh, Johnson Johnson, they, they, don't, they don't have vaccine mandate for their employee. Why you need to uh, vote the vaccine mandate for, the, for, our, for, for your people? If you, if you don't let our, we have a choice, our body. If you don't let us the freedom, maybe we vote you out for next year and not. Next speaker. Go straight to the microphone, straight to the microphone. State your name when you get to the microphone, please. Hi, my name is Pierre. As you have seen, there's many people who have spoken against the vaccine today, so I would please ask that you consider listening to the previous voices that have come up. The vaccine has questionable practices, and there's no long-term recorded history of how reliable the vaccine is. It's the first vaccine in history that travels through your brain, which is very concerning. And why isn't there therapeutics like hydroxychloroquine and zinc or ivermectin being promoted as early treatment as an option? If it can be prevented early, then why not? Why are the doctors not being able to prescribe ther therapeutics for early treatment when it has been proven to work? And why is Sam Licardo a commie sympathizing sympathizer? Thank you. Next speaker, please state your name at the microphone. Uh, my name is Delilah Rosas. This proposal treads on dangerous grounds. It will be the beginning of a segregated community if it is passed. Recently, three fully vaccinated U.S. senators tested positive for COVID-19. Vaccinated are not immune to transmitting and contracting COVID-19. So why are we proposing for them to only gather for events? Why are we not testing vaccinated residents? Why are we only singling out non-vaccinated residents? The vaccine only milds the one's own symptoms if they catch COVID. What science does that have to do with going into the city-owned buildings or an event? By allowing this to pass, it will not stop here. Next will be restaurants, deemed essential places, grocery stores, and whatever mom and pop shops are left until there is nowhere that the unvaccinated can go. Would you would be creating a harsh environment for those who have every right to not take the vaccine that have every same right to attend any city-owned building. A harsh environment for those who recovered from COVID now have the antibodies. Why aren't we talking about this Thank you, next speaker. My name is Antonio Rodriguez. I've read a lot of talk about the vaccine. Let's just get straight to the point. This is a non-vaccine vaccine. This thing does not do anything. And I'm here to put you guys on notice that whatever you guys try to enforce, I'm looking at you, Mayor, we, are, we will resist you. We are the resistance and we are here. Hear my voice, we will resist because we don't bow to tyrants. Thank you, Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. Next, next speaker. Hi, Pat. Um, I have a condition called Rouleau. Can you please state your name? I have a condition called Rouleau, and it means that I am one of those outliers that's not very good with the generally accepted practices of safe of the vaccine. And I have to wonder, why is it that there is no testing of your blood with the vaccine before you even take the vaccine for each individual, if it's considered so safe? So please think that. And also, whatever happened to keeping Nuremberg Code 2400-26250, please keep that in mind, that was just done very emphatically, and I keep asking you, how about upholding that code?
Hello, Council. I've lived in San Jose my please, entire can life. You, can you please state your name? Catherine. And I've always been proud to live here until now. I vehemently oppose this vaccine mandate. If you need to protect the vaccinated from the unvaccinated, what is the point of the vaccine? Forced medical procedures are crimes against humanity. Medical choice is a human right. Rules for thee, but not for me, will not stand in San Jose. God gives me freedom, not man. We're moving to Zoom, Tessa Woodmancy. Thank you so much. Okay, good. Well, sure nice to have a lot of people engaged in our democracy, that's for sure. And basically, um, you know, the thing with the vaccine is that we really, the real vaccine is to stay away from consumerism and capitalism. It's not just the shot. And I don't even know if the shot works, you know, the thing is, we know the shot doesn't work. We're seeing that. The true vaccine is that we need to stay out of, out of capitalism, out of stores, out of uh, buildings. We need to stay home. We need to grow our own food. We need to stay in our bubble. And this is what's coming to roost, um, Council, San Jose Council, is that you're requiring people to go back into, you're encouraging us, you're advertising, get back into the stores, get back into the restaurants. And this is the problem. You're creating it. We need to work at home and stay home. And anybody who can work at home should, should be working at home. And that's what- Shannon. Shannon. Hi, thank you. Thank you for reminding us at the beginning of this that our entire population of Santa Fe County, out of 1.9 million, there have only been 1,721 deaths. I wonder what the increase in number of suicides has been in that time frame, or the increase of abused children, or new addicts, or new antidepressant users. I sure wish you have, would have presented those statistics, or do they not matter? For our this year choosing to bring back segregation, it's ironic that you would have the Juneteenth item just before this item. My daughter's immune compromised. And it's not advice that she get the vaccine at this point, though she's had her all other vaccinations in life. Where does this leave her? Why does my 10-year-old get punished? You said earlier that these steps are reasonable. Reason, reasonable for her, who? What about my daughter's life? Give me an answer that I should tell my daughter. This doesn't, won't just stop at this. This won't just stop at large gatherings. This will, don't, this will continue to go on. You also said other measures may be taken. If, uh, I'm sorry, I think that's all that I had to say. I, I got it done in time. Thank you for hearing, taking my time. Dr. Franklin. Dr. Franklin. Oh, okay. This is Dr. Franklin, and I'm speaking to object to vaccine passports and mandates. You are not medically qualified to impose a medical procedure on anyone. Medical care needs to be an individual decision between a person and their doctor, not a mandate by the government. We treat and value each person as an individual and do not blindly apply the same treatment to all. Also, you have no right to curtail our freedoms by imposing a vaccine mandate that will restrict freedom of movement and assembly. Our First Amendment rights guarantee freedom of assembly and free exercise of religion. And this would trample our constitutionally protected rights. If any of you vote for vaccine mandates, everyone here today will sign up to recall you. Listeners, if you want to remove anyone voting for this, go to SantaClaraRecall.com to find out more. That's SantaClaraRecall.com to find out more. Jim, Jim Clark. Okay, I'm gonna go fast. I'm here to add my voice to the large number of people who are united against proposed ordinance. The result of a vaccine mandate will be an apartheid system, more civil unrest, more poverty, more illness and death, and a deepening of the divisions in this country. However, it will swell the coffers of Big Pharma and its investors. The government and the media has spun the facts about COVID to instill fear in a population. Most people believe the propaganda they are fed and they are afraid of dying of COVID. They don't realize that they are far more likely to die in a, die in a car accident or from cancer or the Mac daddy of them all, cardiovascular disease. But now some are so afraid that they're willing to trade every hard-won liberty and line up to show their papers to a Gestapo agent of the state. 
Ignored is the breakthrough infections of the vaccinated. Ignored is the outbreak of the resistance around the world for uh, uh, forced vaccinations and not a peep from our president or the media. Instead, the, the government and the media doubled down on the same failed policies while contradicting themselves in their, pu in their public statements. And I haven't got time for the rest, but thank you. Vote no. Hello, can you hear me? Yes. Okay. Please listen, Council. Those who give up freedom for safety won't deserve or get either. Ben Franklin. You and I make our own choices. Mandating vaccine admissions is inhuman and discriminatory. Hear this. My body, my choice. You don't touch my butt, so you don't give me a shot. Same logic. Note these facts. COVID's death rate is low. Fully vaccinated can spread the virus to others. Nothing is free. 13 million in Cali are unvaccinated. If this passes, you do the math. I also went to the funeral of a man who died after his vaccine. If it can't stop COVID from spreading, then it causes more harm than help. Why should the many be judged because of a few? The Patriots chose freedom over safety and gave us America. I believe in you, Council. I don't want to point fingers. I want you to reason. Make the smart, right choice. Be heroes like our founding fathers. Vote for the economy and vote for this. My body, my choice. Thank you. Angela? Angela? Hi. Yes, you have one chance to stop it. You have one choice to stop this. This will open the door to something very, very evil. And you've heard of all the people before us, and I agree with them all. This, you need to oppose this. This is, uh, there's so many, we've had COVID, my family and all. We've recovered. My, my dad, who was 76 and just came out of the hospital, recovered. He, we all recovered. Um, we didn't have to have a vaccine. God's given us natural immunity to fight infection. You have one chance to put an end to this. What's going to happen when we can't shop? What's going to happen to your kids if they don't want a vaccine and they can't shop? You're going to open the door of evil. Do not make this decision. I vote no, and please uphold what we see. Roy. C. Roy, Mayor Licardo and council members, you serve at the consent of the people. Don't be haters. Support love and liberation of choice. Vax choicers love life and love means love. You are hereby placed on notice. We the people do not consent to the hate of medical tyranny implemented as a vax mandate or requirement on free men and women. The only COVID deaths in my circle are a 27 year old healthy black young man Remember, every black life matters from womb to tomb. And another friend, 40 years young, stroke, half of his body paralyzed, that this blood and this injury will be on your head. It is the vaxxed victims that compromise society by pathogenic priming, viral immune escape, viral shedding, antibody dependent enhancement. We demand vote no on the mandate. Your pension fund ROI was 29.5%. That's a conflict of interest with big pharma. Written cycle threshold transparency is. Elizabeth. Hello, board. The problem you neglected to state is what the CDC has openly admitted. You're not reducing any risk by favoring the vaccinated. The vaccinated are not fully protected. They can be reinfected and they're able to infect others. This is very clear by the number of new cases in the vaccinated. Massachusetts reports 3,098 new breakthrough cases in 4.45 million vaccinated individuals. Your, your statistics did not include the hospitalized who are vaccinated, as well as the unvaccinated. Here at the Watsonville Hospital ER, beds are full because of breakthrough cases in the vaccinated. This came directly from an intake nurse, and she's very upset the media isn't covering it. Current VAERS data released Friday showed a total of 595,622 reports of adverse events from all groups, 13,068 deaths, 81,050 serious injuries between December 14th and August 13th. This proposed mandate does not... You know? T. 
Christina Berrigan, mandated shots must not be allowed. We see more and more reports the vaccines are leaking. The injected can transmit the virus just as much as people who, ha who haven't taken the shot if not more. Over 13,000 deaths and tens of thousands of severe injuries reported on VAERS, which has a history of underreporting. Informed consent isn't happening. People say reports don't prove causation, which is technically correct. That's only because they are initial reports that demand investigation, which isn't happening. There are no reports proving that each of the deaths and injuries are not due to the shots. Burden of proof is on agencies and governments, not the other way around. Pfizer just got fast-tracked FDA approval. But that also means illegal pressure from universities and employers took place before that happened. We don't have any long-term safety data, and the sudden need for boosters proves that. Natural immunity must be accepted. Coercion and discrimination is taking place through incentives and threats to livelihoods. I will not show my paper. Julie Gentry. Listening to this call, I hear the city um, council is concerned about equality for all which is reassuring. My hope is that the concern for equality will extend to one's choice to vaccinate as well. To discriminate from being allowed to into a business or building based on their vaccine st status is deplorable. This last 17 months, I have been discriminated against by based on not being able to wear a mask safely. What does this mean? It means not being able to buy groceries for my family, not being able to use a restroom when away from home, not being able to receive all the medical care, not being able to fly and much more. If you approve a passport mandate for the city of San Jose, you will create a greater divide within San Jose. Many more wear a mask than can get the vaccine. If the vaccine works as we are told, then there should be no concern for the portion of the population that's not vaccinated. I urge you to vote no on this agenda item. Thank you. Kim. Hi, I'm Kim and I want to talk to Mayor Licardo. I have a friend who prayed with you at the creek one day, and I just want you to know people are praying for you and all of you council members to make a choice, a choice to uphold people, all people, not discriminate, not discriminate against anyone. I urge you to pray and ask the living God to help you make a decision and make the right decision value people's choice because people are smart. They know how to protect themselves. They know if they need the vaccine and they know if they don't need the vaccine. So please value human life, all human life. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you Kim. Uh, uh, I, wanted, I want to note, note it's, it's now, now five, five o'clock uh, and uh, we have more than hundred people who would still like to speak on Zoom. I want to ensure we accommodate and get uh, able to hear from the public. So we're going to uh, limit com comment to 30 seconds. So that way we can ensure that everyone on Zoom can be heard before the six o'clock uh, time. Thank you, Tony. Okay. That's, correct. That's correct. We have an hour left. So we're gonna do all that we can to accommodate everyone. Tony? And then, Anyone who will be speaking now be asked to leave. Okay. Okay, Melissa. I object to the unlawful time limitation on public comment under the Ralph Brown Act. Instead, the Brown Act requires a reasonable amount of time under the circumstances, which is provided by applicable case law is usually three to five minutes. Please vote no on vaccine passports and vaccine mandates. SFT. Hi, I am opposing these uh, vaccine uh, mandates. We are putting you on notice and we are piercing the veil, the corporate veil. You are all personally liable if injuries and business failures due to these forced vaccine mandates if you pass them, and if you do not let people know that they have a medical and religious exemption, you are committing fraud, and you're vi violating the Nuremberg Code, and we are putting you on notice. Maria Saldana. Hello, hi, could you hear me? Yes. Okay, yeah. Uh, 
I am Maria Saldana, and I'm just surprised we're even talking about this. This was this is going to lead us to being segregated. Our Amendment 14 in our Constitution assures people that we will all have equal rights, and this is not showing equal rights as far as I'm concerned. It's, to, it's going to deprive liberty and our freedom and our property. And as far as I'm concerned, this is my body. I could, it's none of your business what I take, take out or what I put in. To make a long story short, I'm old and I'm a grandma and I'm pissed off. Matthew? Mayor, you made a claim in your memo that we have a case rate of three times higher in the unvaccinated. But do we really? I used the same data in Sarah Cody's slides that you were quoting. We had exactly or approximately 147 unvaccinated cases the week of 8-11. We had 132 fully vaccinated and 27 partially vaccinated. That means 52% of actual cases for the week of 8-11 had been vaccinated with at least one dose. 47 were fully vaccinated. This is not a pandemic of the unvaccinated. Caller 5140. I love it. I love everybody acting like me. I want to hear you people at all these city council meetings. And you know what we're going to hope for? That every city council member gets their booster shot. They're the one who needs to take it, right? They're the ones who need it. And, you know, maybe they won't be around after they take it. Wouldn't that be funny? That would be hilarious. I know that a lot of people there are religious, but you know what? Maybe God's going to punish them for taking their booster shot. They deserve every terrible. Monique? Hi, thank you for this time. I oppose the vaccine mandates. This is an overreach of the government. All the animals in the trials died, and now you guys are experimenting on humans. I personally know two people who have died from an adverse reaction to this vaccine and or have had an adverse reaction to the council members. I personally plead with you to vote against this. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Kim Graciano. Hi, can you hear me? Yeah. yeah. Okay, um, I'm Kim. Um, so I, I oppose the vaccine mandate. 45 years ago, my family escaped from communism in Vietnam to come to America where we, where we can have freedom and equal opportunities. This vaccine passport is discriminatory, unconstitutional, and certainly takes away our liberty and freedom that America was founded on. In addition, in addition the CDC reported as of last Friday, 13,000 vaccine COVID deaths and over 600,000 adverse events. I asked Don Suter. Hello. Please make no mistake, those who have segregated in past history also thought they were doing the right thing. To speak to your maker and make sure you make the right decision. The Delta variant is no more is more contagious, but shame on you for not sharing that it is no more lethal than the seasonal flu. So little data in your presentation, shame on you. I implore you to further analysis. The mandate in the White House is not for the vaccine. Please. PK. PK, go ahead. Okay, Xander. I'm a San Jose citizen and a COVID recovered San Jose firefighter mandating or recovering vaccine passports for a drug which is still in clinical trials until the end of 2022 is beyond reckless and leaves out complete informed consent, which is illegal. For the last two plus years, the council has supported Black Lives Matter with less than 25% of the African American demographic vaccinated. The passing of this policy would disproportionately affect the very individuals this council has been tirelessly supporting. An Oxford study dated 8 10 21 published in the Lancet shows fully vaccinated healthcare workers carry 251 times the viral load. The modern day typhoid mayor. Christy Connors. Hello, can you hear me? Yes. Yes, hi. I would like to say I'm opposed to 
the uh, vaccine mandate, any vaccine pa uh, passport. I object under the Ralph Brown Act to the unlawful time limit being placed on public comment. Given the unlawful restrictions and the resolving in resulting inability for me to state my position as it relates to vaccine. Colin Connor. Oh, I think good oh, hello good evening um i uh let's see you have got a lot of support for this from all this public comment so since everyone else has said what i planned to say i'm just gonna say you're all gonna get recalled enjoy retirement anger gazo Eng? Hello, can you hear me? Yes. Okay. You all should oppose vaccine passports and mandates. The government should not require anyone to show proof of vaccination or real, reveal private health information just to go about their daily lives. This concept violates two central, two central tenets of the American system, freedom of movement and healthcare privacy. Please, really think hard and do a try for Everyone in San Jose, we're here. Thank you. Okay. Uh, why is there literally no discussion regarding those who have natural antibodies from recovering from COVID? Why are we only giving social credit to those who have received an artificial synthetic vaccine? Money, that's why. Find your humanity. If we lose the right to govern our own bodies, what do we have left? What do we have left to lose? This is a pandemic of government overreach. Recall Newsom, vote Anthony Termino for governor. Cecilia? Yes, um, I just wanna say that I, I think that um, everyone should note the website, santaclararecall.com, as uh, I am not optimistic that this group of uh, uh, officials will do the right thing. They haven't done it before with uh, mandates. Just look at what they've done to the kids. So, Santa Clara Recall dot com. Pamela. Pamela. Yes. Okay. Hello. Go ahead. Hi. Hi. I'm Pamela. I strongly oppose the mandates because, oh dear, um, what must be injected in mandating what must be injected into a person's body to be allowed to the pursuit of life, liberty, and happiness has to has no place in a free society. And when people were questioning, Lori. Hi, this is Lori. I'm here to object to the vaccine passports. It's in line with the mark of the beast. And if any of you vote for it, everyone here today will sign up to recall you. Listeners, if you are angry, join us at SantaClaraRecall.com. We are adding a city council recall to the supervisor recall. It is morally wrong to force people to risk their lives taking this experimental injection to participate in society. Listen to your constituents right now. Vote no on vax mandates. We need freedom, not control. Remnant. Remnant. Daryl. Gerald, Victor Morris, yeah, can you hear me? Okay, yes, 
Okay, I'm Victor Morris. I'm 58. 14 days ago, I was diagnosed with COVID. I was sick for 24 hours. I took ivermectin. The next day, I was dramatically better and recovered with mild uh, symptoms since then. I'm here to object to the vaccine mandate. It's discriminatory, it's oppressive, it's totalitarian, and it's unconstitutional. It violates the principles of freedom that our country was founded on, and it violates our God-given right to control what we put in our bodies. To the council members, I will say with your recent Second Amendment decisions and now this one, you have abandoned the principles of our country and our God, and you abandoned the... Matt Ricardo? Yes, hello. Go ahead. So my mom took this experimental gene therapy and is now uh, undergoing heart surgery. She has to undergo heart surgery on September 2nd. Uh, my wife has a friend from high school who died at 32 years of age. And I'm kind of confused. I, I thought, uh, didn't Rob Perales, didn't you get Bell's palsy from the vaccine? So um, in short, I just want to say this has a 99% survival rate, more than that. Um, I just can't believe we're having this conversation. Aiden? Uh, yes, hello, can you hear me? Yes. Hello, members of the council. Quote, after 1939, the German authorities implemented ID cards and papers for Jews. Jews were not permitted in public places and Jews were banned from every aspect of normal integration, end quote. I equate proof of vaccination cards with Nazi Jewish identification papers. This legislation's reasoning is the same as the Nazis. The Nazis said the Jews were physically unfit for the world. This mandate deems the vaccine passportless as physically unfit anywhere too. If you care for our safety as our same, then do not approve this legislation. Thank you. Rachel Robert. Hi, can you hear me? Yes. I am a third generation Holocaust survivor and I can see the parallels to this unconstitutional mandate right out in the open. This is absolutely unacceptable. This has not been proven. This should not be placed upon our citizens. I'm absolutely appalled that this is even a consideration. There have been nearly 600,000 serious adverse reactions that we even know about, not to mention 13,000 deaths plus. There was just a lawsuit in Alabama from a whistleblower from Pfizer for 40. Hilda? Hilda? Yes, do you hear me? Yes. Yes, my name is Hilda. My husband and I own a small business in San Jose, and I'm a healthcare practitioner. I have many questions, but here are just now a few. First, what are the ingredients of the vaccine? Some are patented proprietary ingredients that seem to contain poisonous toxins. Two, what are the short-term and long-term known complications from the vaccine? I would like to see the results of valid research and clinical studies of the effects on humans. So far, none of this has been done. Third, what are the consequences to medical practitioners if they're not able to give their patients informed consent? Without it, there is legal liability to the practitioner. Joy? Joy? Missy? Yes, I urge you to vote against the segregationist approach that would constitu constitute systemic bias against the unvaccinated. We know the VAERS database shows over 13,000 deaths from the vaccines and over 600,000 bad side effects and or hospitalizations from the vaccines. The so-called vaccines are not that effective against stopping the spread of the Delta variant or future variants and that vaccinated people are reported to have less symptoms and therefore more likely to spread the spread and not stay home. Mike Olson. Mike Olson. Thomas H. Hi, can you hear me? Yes. I'm Dr. Thomas Habermann. With your proposed vaccine passport, you are disregarding superior natural immunity from previous infection. You are disregarding people's right to their own health choices. That's not the government's job. This is America after all. Let people decide what risk they want to take. 
The vax works as advertised. Everybody who wants to be protected can get it. Leave everybody else alone, period. Lynn? Hi, can you hear me? Yes. I strongly oppose the vaccine mandate. Coercing people to take an experimental vaccine for a virus that has a 99% recovery rate makes absolutely no sense, is a violation of the Nuremberg Code, and is a crime against humanity. Thank you. Stephanie Bernal. Stephanie Bernal. Caller 9288. Caller 9 to, with the number ending 9288. I did know everything everybody said, and I just want to address all the council members. If you can, if you vote yes on this, I, 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 I had this all planned, but 30 seconds is just, it's, I can't in 30 seconds. This is just wrong. It's so wrong. It feels wrong. It's wrong. Ashley? Hi, thank you for taking the time to actually meet in person today, unlike many other cities in our area. Um, I first would like to say I am absolutely against these vaccine mandates and vaccine passports. I think this is actually appalling that we even have to be speaking on this today. I want you to consider the fact that there is not one person that has spoken out in favor of this. You took an oath and you need to listen to the people that you represent. Not one person has spoken out in favor of what you are doing. This is absolutely ridiculous. Please take a look at the data that is being presented now. Aaron Ying. Aaron. Hello, can you hear me? Yes. Okay. My medical training emphasized that patients have the right to choose their own treatment or to refuse it. They have that right unless they have been deemed mentally incompetent. By voting for this, you are essentially calling 30 to 35% of Blacks, Latinos, and whites who have not been vaccinated mentally incompetent. If you vote yes, you essentially also create a second class citizen group that will lead to discriminations many times worse than what was done to the Blacks. You just voted for the Juneteenth. Please do not be hypocrites. Yvonne Estrada. Yvonne Estrada. I'm here, please, can you hear me? Yes. Hi there, uh, good evening uh, to the mayor and the city council. I just really wanna emphasize for you all that this is a, a very grave act of segregation and discrimination. I, I don't know who is pushing you to make such a brash decision in such a short period of time. The, according to VAERS, 12,000 people have died of the vaccines that double of all the vaccines put together in the last 20 years, according to the CDC. If you're vaccinated or not, you can still contract the virus. Matthew Juner. I have a question. Do you think that the vaccines work? If they do work, why are you forcing everybody that doesn't want them to get them? If you're, if you're vaccinated, you don't have to worry. Um, you guys are discrediting natural immunity, which happens to be scientifically proven to be stronger than the vaccinations. So why do, you, why do you want to force us in order to go out in public to have to get a drug that's still experimental regardless of the FDA approval, which was fast-tracked for a drug that's only 39% effective where normally it's 90%? Zoom PTSD. Zoom. Okay, you got me now? It is appalling that you guys have shortened our time to 30 seconds. You told us we had till midnight. There's over 100 people. You can listen to us. Additionally, CDC back in C this March, Rochelle Walensky said that the vax people do not carry the virus. They do not get sick. Now, she's saying, reports over our, over from the international colleagues in Israel suggest increased risk of severe disease amongst vaccinated 
those vaccinated early. Will you li- will you guys listen or will you stick your heads in the sand? Remember when co- one COVID death was too met too much. Caller nine zero four two. Caller nine zero four two. Press star six to unmute. Go ahead. Right. Can you hear me? Yes. Hi, uh, my name is Nicholas. Um, so I'm from South Africa originally, and uh, I grew up in a time when your your ID card listed your race, and that ID card specified where you could live, work, what bus you could ride, where you were allowed to shop. And I'll be damned if I see this bring, come to San Jose. Maybe your First Amendment, the right to peaceably assemble, doesn't say what you may assemble for, just the right to peaceably assemble is enshrined. Thank you. Elaine? Can, can you hear me? Yes. Great. My name is Elaine Cassandra, and I'm Russian-American. I strongly oppose the vaccine mandate. The all three experimental drugs of Pfizer, Moderna, and J&J cannot be called vaccine. It is still on stage three of the medical experiment. And any medical experiment is going against the International Nuremberg Code. And dear San Jose City Council, every single one of you will be held accountable for damages and deaths Reparations will be required for all those damaged and dead if you approve it. We the people. We the people are speaking out against the vaccine passport. This is part of an evil plan to keep us controlled. Please do not participate in evil. One day you will stand before God and give an account for your actions. Vaccine passports are unconstitutional and against our freedom of person against our freedom given to us by God, not government. The government's purpose is to help and to support the people. You are taking part in suppressing the people and our rights, keeping the population controlled is communism. We are- Toby? I vehemently oppose this mandate for so many reasons, but I will speak in your language and easily refute the reasoning that you just provided in the demonstration. Your reasoning was that the Delta variant is 1,000 times more contagious than the original strain as shown in the viral load. According to the CDC, the viral load in a fully vaccinated person is the same as the viral load in an unvaccinated person. This means the vaccinated are just as infectious as the unvaccinated. Don't be discriminatory. Cheryl? Yes, hello? Go ahead. Can you hear me? Yes. Why does California advertise to vacation here when you want to exclude people? How dare you go against the Constitution? What will you say when you stand before the Lord? Ask yourself, why are people moving out of California in record numbers? Are we going to have to wear an emblem on our arm just like the Jews? How dare you even think of something like this to even happen in our city? You are ruining this city. Angie? My name is Angelita. The CDC has clearly stated that unlike with other variants, vaccinated people infected with Delta can transmit the virus. Unvaccinated people should not be treated differently than the vaccinated. If you're serious about public health, then follow the science and treat every human with equality. When I was a little girl, I faced serious discrimination as a Latina and then as a woman studying engineering at Stanford, but that was nothing compared to my forebears who were undocumented immigrants who were turned into scapegoats for political purposes. Now my... Charlotte? Hi, can you hear me? Yes. Telling San Jose citizens to get the vaccine or else is force, overreaching, and coercion. City Council, this will be the most important vote of your political career and will forever shape how you are seen within the community. A yes vote is saying you stand for segregation in any shape or form being forced upon citizens, removing people's medical and religious freedoms, encouraging further division and are turning your backs on our first responders who have served this community during the entire pandemic without a vaccine. 
who will serve the city when it is cemented in stone. We do not care about our first responders. All of San Jose is watching and listening today. You will be recalled. Alma. You've been battling this pandemic with the strictest rules and regulations. And here we are, even more rules and regulations. That's called insanity. You like imposing rules, the power, the virtue, the high tech bribes, and what a great way to get rid of your unfunded liabilities. Kill them off. History is recording this very meeting. History will judge you. Will you be on the right side? Our freedom comes from God, not you. And he will judge you. Administrator. Hi, can you hear me? Yes. Okay. Uh, this vet proposed vaccine mandate is 100% discrimination. I personally know of people, myself included, who cannot tolerate these shots. I have a relative, if given this shot, will kill him. And who's going to be responsible for his murder? This makes absolutely no sense. Not the least of which is the religious, uh, deeply held religious no, no, beliefs. No. Please, no. please vote no for all of us. Amy. Hi, I'm not gonna spend a lot of time giving facts because you've heard them. What? At this point, depending on what you do, it's pretty clear you're either paid off or just evil or maybe both. But perhaps you didn't expect us to fight back, but this is really only the beginning. I saw there were 667 comments online and only one of them was dissenting. You heard everyone here today, everyone is against these. You say that this is a pandemic of the unvaccinated, but if there's an 80% vaccination rate in our county or in our city, how can there be a spike? You and also, why are we getting rid of our front care, our frontline workers, if there is such a dangerous spike? It doesn't make any logical sense. You know, you are protecting only yourself, but you're not protecting the interests of your constituents. You talk of flattening the curve, then why are you firing the nurses? We've heard this all before. Michelle? Can you hear me? Yes. Great. I want to talk about something I haven't heard, and that is FDA quote end quote approval. That does not mean that this is safe. Look at the history of recalls on the FDA.gov website and look up drug recalls. You will see over 8,000 drugs have been recalled after getting full FDA approval from 2013 to 2018 alone. Janet Woodcock, acting director of the FDA, got it all wrong on the opioid crisis as well. She should not be the voice for American health and wellness. Reject this mandate. Madison. Hi, Madison Coyle. I'm a mother. I'm an Air Force combat veteran, and I am also a student at San Jose State. The facts I was going to say is that this vaccine does not prevent the spread or contraction of COVID. Many can't even get it. What it does promote is division in this community, and I ask our leadership to show us that political leadership is not an oxymoron. And I call out to any police officer in the room, you do not have to enforce this unconstitutional action if it is passed. Recall Newsom. Adriana. Hi, good evening. I, a living woman on Santa Clara County, hereby give the council members and mayor notice that you are each violating your oath of office by coercing we the people to get vaccinated against our will. As employees of the county of Santa Clara, you are part of an incorporated legal entity without any authority over any lawful living men and women on Santa Clara County. In fact, you are bound by the constitution to protect our inalienable rights. Failure to protect our rights puts each of you in breach of your contract. This is a serious crime. You will have to answer for when we have assembled and have proper common law courts reestablished. Stacy. Stacy. Jennifer Lee. 
Hi, um, thank you. Um, to propose a mandate that punishes those who are reasonably wary of a vaccine with no long-term safety data is pretty cruel and dehumanizing, especially when there are other effective alternative treatments out there. Um, this mandate will also disproportionately marginalize Black Americans whom you profess to support and also make it harder for small businesses to survive um, as they will lose customers. So please do the right thing. Thank you. Betsy? Betsy? Hello. Hello. Go ahead. Hi. Um, you are, um, you are putting, implementing um, laws um, that the black people had to, um, would discriminate against, um, um, not letting people into stores, um, maybe not letting them get food. You're trying to smoke people out so they'll get those vaccines. But there are many people who are injured and dying, and they are not going to have any money by any establishment um, with their health insurance or the government um, to be able. Anna? Hello? Can you hear me? Yeah. OK. I strongly oppose the vaccine mandate. Last week, my friend's nephew, a young healthy man, took the vaccine and lost his eyesight. This mandate discriminates the following group, family with young kids, people with medical position and allergy, people with religious and cultural preferences, people survived the COVID. So I strongly urge the council member and the mayor to say vote no on this uh, vaccine mandate. Thank you. Blanca? Go ahead, Blanca. Do you hear me? Yes. You heard us. You were elected to represent us. I have not heard of anyone who approves of this. I've only heard people who oppose of this. So I say represent us accordingly and vote no, or we will vote you out. We will recall you. Lactose, lactose. Hi, um, I oppose the mandate and can't even state all the reasons how wrong it is. You can't assume power over people's bodies and souls. You also violated the Brown Act today by confusing people who wanted to be at the meeting in person and asked them to leave. Who do you think you are, kings? There is currently a recall for Santa Clara County Board of Supervisors. Recall santaclara.com. We can add you to the list. Your careers will be over. Calvin Campos. Calvin. Isaac. Isaac? Yes. Can Thank you hear you. me? Yes. Yes, I oppose this uh, state vaccine mandate. It's going against our constitutional rights. You have no authority over any individual. And vote no on this. That is all. Danielle? You have a duty to address the risks and adverse effects associated with this vaccine, and you have failed to do so. True informed consent would be open and transparent. Heart attacks, strokes, Guillain-Barre, MS, these are not rare. What are the long-term effects? You don't know. One size does not fit all, and it's proving to have deadly consequences. We are not anti-vax, we are pro-choice, and I find it disgraceful that you are spreading that dangerous misinformation. If you are not capable of understanding the severity of this matter or are incapable of listening to the people you work for, you need to step down. Healthy people don't spread viruses. Natural immunity is powerful. The vaccinated can still catch and transmit the virus, and coercion is illegal. Karen Wu. Karen Wu. Hi, this is Karen Wu. I oppose this um, mandate. Um, I know you may not care about us. Um, you may not care about uh, whether you be recalled. I'm not angry with you, but I know the only one true God who loves 
uh, um, loves you and loves me, um, he will give you eternal life if you turn to him. Thank you. Kaniko? Hello, can you go? Can you hear me? Kinda. Is that better? Yes, that's better. Okay, council, managing passports is unnecessary, irresponsible, wrong, and illegal. Many have had COVID and antibodies are more effective, and many with the vaccine still get COVID. Vaccine child excluded the pregnant and the unhealthy, so that effects are unknown for a significant portion of the population. Passports don't allow for those who are allergic and ignore the nearly 600,000 reactions reported to bears, including blood clots, paralysis, inflammation of the heart, and death. The number of code has already been mentioned several times. The one Suzanne? Suzanne's? Hi there, can you hear me? Yes. I don't know about you, but lately I don't recognize America. We had BLM marching through our streets who are confirmed Marxist. We had statues taken down, books taken off the shelves, doctors silenced. People were fired from their jobs for a different opinion. Now you want to mandate something which is against the Constitution? I want you to ask yourselves, what will be next? Will you agree with what comes next? I vote no on this whole conspiracy. No on man. Pelican. Well, you guys are the government. You were supposedly elected into your positions. But I don't take orders from you. You work for me. So you go ahead and mandate whatever the hell you want to mandate. But I won't be following your damn orders because a mandate is not law. You people don't make the law. And you better repent for your sins because you have one last chance to be saved or rot in hell for all eternal damnation. Amy Torin. Can you hear me? Yes. My name is Amy. I have lived in San Jose for 20 years. Whether or not I've gotten the COVID shot is private medical information. And I will not give one cent to any business in San Jose that demands to know my private medical information. After over a year of restrictions and lockdowns, I can't imagine that businesses would be okay with losing my business and the business of others who value medical privacy. I will vote to recall every one of you who votes for a vaccine passport. Vote no on vaccine passports. Thank you. Brandy? Brandy? Hi, can you hear me? Yes. Where are all the city council members? This is a serious issue. You must vote no on the vaccine ma mandate. Listen to the people. Mark my words, this vaccine passport will result in big tech taking over the city of San Jose, which I believe is the true motive for the so-called vaccine passports. Vote no on this mandate or you all will be recalled. Karen? Can you hear me? Yeah. Uh, you, don't, you don't give orders. You actually represent the people. And I haven't heard one person here who's in favor of any of this nonsense. Uh, no vaccinated person should have superior rights and dehumanize any other group. They can get it just as like anyone else can. This is a leaky vaccine. It's not even a vaccine. It creates spike proteins all over your body. And they can get the vaccine, they can get the uh, COVID and they can transmit it. Blair Beekman. All right, thank you, Blair Beekman. Uh, this has been a really interesting public comment time. Thank you. Um, I think the agenda item actually does say that you're going to question uh, the, the, the vaccine of city government and or else a uh, weekly test. Uh, that's a really creative, interesting uh, way to work. I hope you can uh, continue that sort of effort uh, when you vote today and, and work these sort of ideas with a vaccine passport idea. Uh, doing that work together, all of us as local community, that's how we can address you know, this, these issues at the international level. Thank you. 
M. B. Brokaw. M. B. Okay, there we go. Mayor Licardo and other council members. I'm a former council member for 17 years in the city of San Carlos. I would never, ever have thought of doing such a thing as you guys are contemplating tonight, taking away people's freedom of choice and the liberty they are supposed to have over their own health and bodies. Thank you. Bobby Evans. Hi, I am here to object to the vaccine passport and vaccine mandates. It is not anyone's business what someone else's medical choices are. Sam, uh, Mayor Sam Licardo should be ashamed of himself for blaming the unvaccinated when he knows very well that vaccinated people can also get COVID still and spread it. Please vote no. Marco Cecilio. Yeah, hi, how you can you doing? Can you hear me? Yes. Yeah. Hi. So I'm two time COVID. Uh went through it, came out just fine, me and my family. I have six kids. Me and my wife, we've all again went through it. Our antibody science says our body, when it takes in, it fixes the, you build up the antibodies to be able to fight it off later. And you guys are pumping everybody with these vaccines. That's not, it's stopping your immune system. Rebecca H. Hello. Go ahead. The vaccine passport is discriminating and creates a two class society. I dare say this is too similar to Nazi times. Whether someone takes a COVID-19 injection or not is nobody's business. This is personal medical information. Implementing such a monstrosity goes against our liberties, destroys the future of our children, and is a crime against humanity. I urge you to be a role model for liberty and freedom and oppose the vaccine passports. Talk. Peter Lindstrom. Peter Lindstrom. Uh, yes, can you hear me? Yes. Uh, yes, uh, thank you. Um, first, I, I don't believe that your um, hospital data, the COVID-19 data supports the, the law that as um, asserted by the mayor, Actually, if you click on Santa Clara, um, as of August 23rd, it only shows 245 positive patients and 69 ICU patients. That hardly sounds like a pandemic. In addition, um, no distinctions maybe between vaccinated and, and, and unvaccinated. Uh, out of England, it was shown that six-time uh, death rate for the vaccinated for Delta. M.O. M.O. Hi, can you hear me? Yes. I'm here. Hello? Go ahead. I can't hear you. Hello? Go ahead. Marcia Ribeiro? Marcia? Mingi Bodine? Hello. I know why you vote to pass this order. You want to make California so unpleasant to stay so you can smoke out the people who choose liberty and freedom. I had coronavirus eight months ago. My antibodies are 250 times stronger than the um, average person eight months later. But I'm potentially be, I can potentially be dead or disabled should I take the experimental shots. The city is forcing me to kill or injure myself. You will go down history as an evil 
Nazi city council, murdering the innocent. For those who want to re recall you, go to Santa Clara Recall .com. Susan Fontaine. Susan. I strongly oppose these mandates. Why are there no exemptions or alternatives to the vaccine for people who have natural immunity, such as antibodies? This group of people is being ignored by the science and mandates. People with natural antibodies are the ones who can donate their plasma to save the lives of others with serious cases of COVID. These people are essential, and frankly, in my opinion, the only people who deserve passports. Please listen to the people and vote no. Amy Kay. Amy. Hello, can you hear me? Yes. Hi, Amy Kernan. The definition of fully vaccinated for COVID means that your last vaccination has been within the last three months. Look it up. Using a passport to enable someone to earn a living, buy food for their family in a grocery store, participate in society is a slippery slope, which will lead us to a constant state of mandated buy, try annual vaccines. Show up for a flight? Your last job was four months ago. Sorry, come back when you get your booster. Ran out of gas on the freeway? Sorry, go update your passport. Need to pick up your insulin prescription? Nope, your last job was six months ago. This is already happening. Caller 4119. Go ahead. Hello, my name is Stacy Lars. I'm a 20 year resident. I'm happy to sit outside because I do not participate in wearing a mask, which is part of satanic rituals. I vehemently oppose this ordinance. This is not a vaccine. You guys are criminals. You should all be behind bars. You cannot tell us what to put in or on our bodies. We are responsible for ourselves. We're adults. We make our own choices and decisions. People that are well do not spread illness. Who do you guys think you are? You are going to be recalled. Stop with the fear of porn and the propaganda. We're sick of the. Sam Lowe. Can you hear me? Yes. Mm, okay. My name is Sam. I'm a graduate. I'm a student at San Jose State, and I'm going to speak out today against the VAX mandate. Do you see why I oppose it? Because we're going into a society where we're regressing back into segregation. That's something that we cannot do. And you claim to be so against segregation, but does it really promote that? No, you promote segregation. So I urge you, please vote no, or you face recall, but I know you'll vote yes anyway. And so you get Cindy San Jose. Cindy? Patty. Yes, please stop the vaccine mandate for all people and please stop the vaccine passport in our city or anywhere else. First, mandating vaccine is extremely dangerous if someone already has extreme allergies, unique health complications, and are eligible for the vaccine. We need to respect everyone's right to choose medical treatment independently. This is our God given right. Secondly, I oppose passport as this vaccine passport, as this will lead to segregation and discrimination in our community. Stop the mandate or we will caller six nine one zero. It's hard to follow such great scientific minds, historians, political geniuses, and social justice warriors, but I'm gonna give it a shot. I will be the one person to support the mandate. Have a good day. Julie Lagrasso. Can you hear me? Yes. This forum has heard nothing but votes with the exception of that last one against this mandate. If you vote for this mandate, it will be proof, clear proof that you have no intention to represent the people's wishes and freedom here in San Jose will be dead. D. Kernan.
Hi, Sam and council members. I know you've heard a lot of voices expressing their dislike and displeasure for this vaccine mandate, but please take them seriously. I know we have in Santa Clara County over 85% of the adult population vaccinated. So what is your worry? There's no worry. Let the people that have legitimate concerns alone. Otherwise, you'll force them to a corner and cause a segregated society. Please vote no on this. Elisa Johnson. Alyssa Johnson. Kristen Stephenson. Hi, can you hear me? Yes. Hi. Yep, so I just wanted to call in to vote uh, or to hope you vote no on this. Um, I actually am vaccinated and I encourage people to get vaccinated, but mandating it is a whole different category. Um, as that last gentleman said, we have a very high vaccination rate, over 80%, and that keeps climbing. Let people do it on their own. I think this will cause more um, damage by mandating it than any, than any good. Thank you. Gary. Hello, um, I wanna say thank you for all of your time here. I'm a pro-freedom voter. I strongly oppose the mandates and I beg you to hold off as the current so-called wave is going down. Pandora's box is a terrible thing. Once this is done, it won't go back easily, if at all. If you are thinking that science has decided you do not understand science, science is a debate, it's a process, and science is a body of data that holds conflicting conclusions. The study for these vaccines is not done. Phase three takes a full, two years and won't be done till December. One company, December, 2022, the next company. Alyssa Via. Hi, you talk about San Jose being inclusive when you're actually not. You're discriminating against people who choose medical sovereignty. This is bioterrorism and people should not have to be mandated to shoot themselves up with an experimental drug made by criminal corporations to walk inside of a store. If you really care about health, you should mandate people to drink more vitamins, live a more healthy lifestyle, eat healthy. Like, come on, guys, really? Jody. Yes, can you hear me? Yes. Hi, I'm Jody. Um, I, I would like to call in and um, I object to the mandates on vaccines and vaccine passports. Um, I work for a firm that is now implementing a, an app on your phone so that you don't need papers, you just show your app. So, you know, guess what? We got big tech on board now, along with big pharma. This is a money grab thing. Um, you know, this, this administration is terrible. We got a one party state here in California. I hope we get Gavin Newsom out. Joel. Hello. Hello. Hello, my name is Joel Matthews, and I disapprove of this vaccine mandate. I don't think it's right for me to take the vaccine and not be able to. I do not want to uh, take the vaccine. I just don't want it, okay? I don't want to be forced. I don't want to be told to take it. I don't like it. Thank you. Roland. Hi, uh, this is Roland. My father got COVID before vaccines were available. He was in ICU for three weeks and barely made it. My wife and I are both vaccinated. So are our children. Please protect us while we wait for a booster shot and vote yes unanimously. Thank you. Joe Young. Hello, can you hear me? Yes. The COVID shot is not a legal vaccine. It is an experimental agent which has already caused at least 12,000 deaths and 77,000 serious injuries according to the CDC's own website. My friend's mom died after taking the shot Amani, a 26-year-old healthy young black man, 
died after the shot. Why are you pushing it on us? My body, my choice. In Russia, Putin didn't even mandate vaccine. Are you worse than communists? You're violating, you're violating the Nuremberg Code. PK. PK. Carol. Hi, this is Jerry. I just want to say that I think we should have the say in what we do with our own bodies. We put all this out there, my body, my choice for women to be able to kill another child. But when it comes to our own bodies, we should certainly have a choice to not put anything in that we don't want. I would like you to vote no not mandate people to do something they don't want to do to their own bodies. Thank you. Zach. Hi, good evening, Mayor and Council Members. Can you hear me? Yes. Great. Do you really think we should abolish the Ninth Amendment as it was written? That's the one that protects our unenumerated rights. That means too many to count. The Supreme Court has already found that those rights already include the right to travel, the right to vote, and the right to make important decisions about my own health care and my body. I'm not saying do nothing. We're just saying don't make a decision that's going to fly in the face of human rights because this is a human rights violation. Don't play God. We need you to represent us. Mr. Scott. Can you hear me? Yes. Yes, voting for this would be disrespectful in every sense. I mean, you guys talk about common sense. This isn't even common. If you want to get the shot, if you want to get the booster, that's fine. It's your choice. But to sit there and mandate it for everybody, that's ludicrous. This will not fly with a lot of people. There will be trouble if this goes through. Please take this seriously. Have a good night. Lauren. Hi, I'd just like to say uh, I 100% support a vaccine mandate and passport. I look forward to the day that I can safely go out of my house and not be surrounded by anti-vaxxers, religious extremists, and conspiracy theorists. I 100% support this, and I hope you do too. Christina Bortoloni. Yes, hi. Um, I think this is a matter of basic human decency. I've survived COVID. I have the antibodies. Um, why are we not talking about natural immunity? Um, we shouldn't be forced to take this experimental gene therapy. Trials take two years to complete. At that time, I'm happy to review the trials to make the informed decision on whether or not I want to take the vaccine. Please, I urge you to vote no. Thank you. Thank you. Um, um, I recognize, I recognize there are many other folks who have their hands raised. And so I want you to keep your hands raised. Um, we're now at six o'clock, but please keep your hands raised. Um, Henry is ensuring that we have screenshots so that we can return to you. Our, our public comment is closed, so there'll be no additional people who can raise their hand because everyone. Sir, sir, this isn't a time for public comment. Sir, if you're disrupting, you'll be asked to leave. All right, let me now proceed. All right, everyone who has raised their hand, we're gonna hear from you after the dinner break when we return. Uh, we're taking a break now until seven o'clock and we'll hear from those who have raised their hand. Those will be the, all the people who will be speaking on this item. We wanna make sure all those who were aware of this and have been obviously waiting patiently for these two hours will in fact be able to speak. And so we look forward to your comments at that time. The meeting's in recess. Thank you very Mayor? much. Mayor? Yes, Council Member? Uh, me. Oh, sorry. Uh, you, you mentioned we're coming back at 7. I'm wondering if we could come back at 6.30 instead. Uh, that's fine, assuming 
get everybody back here? Okay. All right. Let's Thank you. Thank I you. Appreciate that. Okay. And these are the last ones. Thank you.